Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie and today I have 25 fall DIYs for you using supplies from the Dollar Tree. These are 25 fall DIYs that I've made so far this fall. So if you've seen some of them, you might wanna skip around. I'm gonna be sure to include chapters down in the description if you want to skip around because today's video is gonna be a long one. So grab something to drink, get comfy, and let's craft. So the first thing I wanted to make was like a little reef or a frame for this beautiful sign from the Dollar Tree that says welcome fall. And so to do that, I'm gonna use one of these brass wreath rings from Dollar Tree, the largest one I think will be great. And I thought it would be fun to do just a simple little reef to hang around it. See how it fits in there pretty well. There's still lots of room to decorate the wreath area and it's gonna kind of make it you know, I don't know if it's, you could hang it at your front door. I think I'm gonna hang mine in my entryway. But what I wanna make the wreath out of is these little burlap leaves from Dollar Tree. So they come on a wire and I wasn't sure if I was gonna use the wire to attach it to the wreath, but I decided I kinda like them better without it. And so they're pretty easy just to pop these off. They're just kind of like hot glued on there. And sometimes they just fall off on their own. I um, picked up two packages of these. Um, there's five in a package, and I think I used a total of nine on this wreath. I am just laying them out, overlapping them slightly, kind of all going the same direction. And then it's just a matter of attaching those on there. Um, I thought hot glue might seep through, but it actually worked pretty well. So that's what we're gonna do is hot glue, and we're just gonna do one at a time. And I just kind of do like the main section of the leaf like that. And then um, I'm working in this direction, overlapping just that like little last piece of the leaf. They have two different kinds of these leaves. They have this one and then they have like, I guess the maple leaf, which is kind of a larger one. I think this one works a little bit better, um, but I'd probably be cute the other way too. They also have um, different colors of these. And hopefully they have them again this year. My store still doesn't have like really any of the craft supplies. The only things I've really seen are like the home decor things and maybe a little bit of other stuff. But my store, my, my store closest to my house doesn't have any fall yet. They're killing me. <laughs> so I think that looks really cool. And now it's just a way to try to find a way to attach the sign to the wreath. So what I did was I just cut the hanger in half and I'm gonna use that existing twine that's on the sign and just kind of put that underneath of a leaf there, the tip of it and just tie a knot. And um, at the bottom of that same leaf, I'm gonna do the same thing here with the other side. And just tie that on there. You might check to make sure that it is hanging kind of like equal distance and adjust your knots if needed. And then I'm just gonna cut off the excess twine. This was just a really easy way to attach it. I am going to make a hanger for it too. Um, I was trying to decide if I liked it like that or if I wanted a bow and I decided I wanted a bow. So this is Easter ribbon. I always pick this up every year because it's like the perfect color of beachy blue. And since there's blue pumpkins in there, I'm definitely gonna go with the blue. A lot of the DIYs today are gonna be a lot about burlap and a little bit about blue. So I'm gonna make a super easy bow. All I did was measure out a tail, two loops on each side, and then a second layer of loops. And then I just need another tail. So it's gonna, be just a very easy ribbon because it's the same on both sides, so no twisting involved. Then you just take a zip tie right in the middle. Don't be afraid, I know bows can be intimidating, but they're really not that bad. Just kind of pinch it in the middle and pull your zip tie tight, and then you just have to pull both of your tails down to the same side. And this is a wired ribbon from Dollar Tree, so it's gonna be really easy to shape this and kind of make it look nice. 
So I thought that would look good at the top. It's going to bring out the blue and some of the pumpkins. It's going to add like entryway feel. And I also just dovetail both edges at the same time, um, trying to even them up a little bit. Now to attach that to the sign, I'm just taking some Dollar Tree twine, wrapping that around that same middle leaf that we um, kind of tied the ends to, tying the bow off on there like that, and then wrapping it around. I'm gonna tie it on the back, and then I'm gonna use that same twine to make a simple little hanger for this. But honestly, if you're just gonna hang it on a nail, you might be able to just hang it with the wreath form. But I had it there, so why not? So I just knotted that, a simple little loop hanger at the top. And I think that looks so cute. Now I wanted something to like finish the bow on the top, so I got it all shaped up and I thought it needed a pumpkin. And I picked up these little um, clip pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, and they're the perfect shade of orange, very light. I thought about just clipping it on there because it has like a little clip on the bottom, but I kind of want it to be like facing me and not like on its side. And so I am just going to pull the little clip out of the bottom. And I thought we would just cut this pumpkin in half. That way it would fit great on the bow. I tried using a putty knife for this and it was a little bit more difficult than you would think. I switched to a um, one of those pool noodle cutters <laughs> that worked a little bit better, but I kind of wanted to leave the stem on there, but I wanted to get most of that half of the pumpkin. I think that looks pretty good. I just need to clean it up a little bit. And then I'm just going to hot glue that on. You gotta be quick because that foam in there will definitely melt, but you can't hot glue it. You just have to work fast. And glue that onto the bow. And I, this was such an easy DIY. That sign is so beautiful. It doesn't have any glitter on it, so that made me so happy. And this is how it turned out. A little welcome fall. Wreath and sign. Isn't it cute? And it was just so easy to put together. And this is how it turned out. I love um, the little blue pumpkins kind of mixed with the oranges. And there's like acorns and stuff on that sign too. Super cute. And the little leaf reef was just so easy to put together. Isn't it cute? I'm a big fan. Okay, next DIY, I found these little houses with words on them at the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree, and I found the word gather, so I thought that'd be really good for fall. I'm just going to use a thrifted sign that I got at Goodwill half off. It was like 50 cents. It was just the right size that I needed, but you could probably find a sign blank from the Dollar Tree that would work as well. Now, this was like a wood sign with like a little sign like on top of it. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it attached. Why not make it a little bit easier on myself? And I wanted the back sign, it's like unfinished wood, so I'm just gonna paint that. And I'm doing it in this color, it is the Cloudless by Apple Barrel. It's a very soft beachy blue, just for a little hint of blue, like peeking out on this. And that was super easy. I just painted all those sides. I also went and painted the edges just to clean it up a little bit. Now for the happy Easter part, I wanted to do like a fun like textured background before we add the little gather houses to it. I've seen those houses say other things, but this is the first time I've seen them say gather. So I thought that was perfect for fall. So I wanna cover up all the words on there and there was like almost even like a foil on there. So it took a little bit to paint this to give me a blank canvas because I'm gonna cover it with burlap, but burlap has holes in it. So you would still be able to see through it. So it's definitely gonna take a couple of coats. I'm just using this like parchment color. Doesn't really matter. I just wanted a background that wasn't gonna have all the words on it. So it took several coats for sure, but I think we did it. I think we got it where you can't, read the words anymore. And so I'm going to be covering that with burlap, but I'm going to go ahead and set that aside and we can start working on the little houses. They're just like little uh, pieces of wood. They're very thin. They have cutouts of the letters. That's why I thought burlap would look really pretty behind them, behind the letters. And I want to paint them 
but I want to paint them something very neutral. So I'm going to use that same color that we used on the sign. And I'm just using a makeup sponge since they're so thin. And I don't want to get like really any paint inside the little cutouts of the letters. Um, and the shade I picked is pretty close to the natural wood itself. You could actually leave them natural um, if you wanted to, or you can make them wider if you'd want. I think that would be cute too. What I plan to do is to paint all of these and then use some of the Dollar Tree little fall rub-ons to decorate the houses even more. But we're going to set those aside, let those dry, and we can start working on our burlap. Using the rolled burlap from Dollar Tree. Now, the only thing I've noticed about this is it's all wrinkled, you know, because of the way they have to roll it. And to work with it, it's better to have it ironed and almost stiffened a little bit. So I am just going to do that first with this piece. I'm going to go ahead and do the whole piece so I can use this for other DIYs as well. And did you know Dollar Tree has starch? I thought that was really cool. I'm just going to spray it down with some Dollar Tree starch and just use my Cricut Easy Press. You could totally use an iron and just to start ironing this out stiffening it up, straighten it out. It's going to make it easier for me to cut because I'm going to want to cut a rectangle that's going to go on the front of it. And I want it to look, you know, somewhat clean. <laughs> now to cut a straight line in burlap, um, there is a little trick that you can use and I'll show that to you. I'm kind of avoiding this one part because this top wrinkle was a little hard to get out. So I'm going to kind of work under that. I want a straight line there. All you do is grab a hold of one of the strands and pull it out. And then it gives you this perfect little path to cut on and you get a perfect line without like having to strain your eyes for that. So I am measuring and that's where I know where I should pull another strand and cut that. And what a great trick because that saves me so much time. Usually I'm like really looking to try to follow the, the path of the line, but this way really made it a lot easier. So I do that for all the dimensions of my sign. Kind of trim it up a little bit too, to make my sides even. And I don't think I measured right because <laughs> it was a little bit off, but I'm just going to trim it up again, kind of using the same strategy. I made it just a little bit too tall. So I'm just going to go up like three or four and pull out another strand. And I kind of want it to be slightly frayed around the edges, but not like where it's like falling apart. Just to give it a little bit of character. And you can do that just by pulling the strands at the end. And I'm just trying to straighten that out, try to make that look rectangular in shape. Now I'm going to use Mod Podge to attach it because I really don't want like the hot glue to be staining through that in the areas where it might be visible. So I did a rather thick layer of Mod Podge down on my painted sign. And that's why I painted it because you definitely can see through that a little bit and just smooth that out on there. Now, while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and replace the hanger, some twine. I put some hot glue at the end. It makes it easier to feed this through. And I'm just going to knot it on the front and make a little hanger for the sign while we're at it. And by the way, I wanted to show you my new toy. Look at this. I got a new Ryobi um, hot glue gun. This is a mini hot glue gun. So it takes the mini sticks and it's really cool. The only thing I noticed, I did use it on most of the DIYs today. Um, the only thing I noticed is that when I needed to produce a lot of hot glue, it couldn't keep up with my other Ryobi one. So I'm probably going to use both of them together, but I did notice that the battery lasts a lot longer in it than it does on my like big heavy duty one, but I like it. I'll have to add it to my Amazon shop as well. Cause that's where I got it. And we're going to use it to glue down all these little houses. So it has that base and then you just pull the little hot glue gun off of it and then return it to the base to recharge. My favorite thing about it is it has that a little glue uh, catcher on the front. And I'm just going to glue these down. I'm trying to keep them like, you know, pretty equal distance. I went ahead and did the G and the R first because um, those kind of really need to be in a certain place. And then I'll just kind of space out all the other little houses in between. And aren't these cute? I love the fact that they're all a little bit different shapes and sizes. 
Now it's time to decorate. These are the little blue, um, white, and orange um, pumpkin rub-ons that they have every year at Dollar Tree. I did notice they had these in again this year at the store that I went to that had fall stuff. And you can trim them down even if they're a little bit too big. I thought we would just do like a little pumpkin on each house would be fun. And sometimes we have plenty of room we can do like stacked pumpkins and such. Some kind of smaller. And I'm just kind of alternating the blue, the white, the, or the orange, and filling that all up. Now, if you've never done these before, they're so easy. You just peel off the paper backing and stick it to them. And then all you got to do is scrape them on. I'm going to use a popsicle stick to scrape mine on. And what you want to do is scrape it on and then when you're peeling it off, you kind of want to check while you're doing it to make sure that it's on there. Because if it's not, you can put it back down pretty quickly and finish scraping it on. I really only had an issue with one and it was this one. I think I got a little um, overzealous and I pulled it off and I couldn't really get it back on. But I'll show you what I did to fix it because, you know, we all make mistakes. So I found another pumpkin that was very similar and I just cut off the bottom of that one. And look at that. You can just kind of like piece it together, scrape that on and all's forgiven. <laughs> So I'm just going to continue scraping that on, trying to be more careful to check to make sure they're down a little bit. I kind of like that distressed look, but I want most of the pumpkin image to be on there if I can get it. Now I did the pumpkins first because I thought that would be the easiest, but there's still some space on the houses there. And so I'm going to go through and do some of the little leaves as well to kind of fill in some of the gaps. I thought that'd be really cute too. Just kind of like little leaves like falling here and there. <laughs> and I love working with these. They are a little bit time consuming, but I think they turn out so pretty. And this is definitely my favorite fall one. I'm so glad they brought it back again this year. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna scrape on my leaves. I find the smaller ones are even easier to do. And we have our little gather sign. I'm gonna go over and just sand them slightly to make sure I don't have any like edges sticking up. Everything is good and down, slightly distressed. And I do slightly distress them with that same color that we used before and a chunky brush from Dollar Tree to give them that coastal farmhouse charm that I always like. And I love that with falls, you can still sneak blue in like this. And it still goes really nicely with fall because I love a good blue pumpkin. Now I was trying to decide if it needed anything. And I thought it did. I thought it kind of needed something in the void, um, the places up here where there weren't a house. So I thought some of the little burlap flowers and the little burlap leaves from the Crafter Square at Dollar Tree would be great. Since I already have the brown burlap, I thought the white burlap would be really cute. So I thought I would do a flower like above the T because I really kind of have a lot of room there. It's a little off centered, which bothered me, but I kind of went with it. And then like just kind of have leaves like flying through the air. And we're going to use a little white burlap leaves. I kind of decided on the smaller ones. I think they're so cute. And how cute are those burlap flowers? The Dollar Tree has really stepped up their game. So I'm just going to hot glue the flower down. Now I didn't really want to hot glue the little burlap leaves because the same reason that I didn't want to hot glue the burlap before, I didn't want you to be able to see any like hot glue stains through them. So we're just gonna Mod Podge each one of those down. And with burlap and Mod Podge, like it doesn't want to stick at first, but if you let it dry, and sometimes if you put a little on top, it's gonna help glue it down. And I think that looks much more complete. There is our little gather sign with our little houses and pumpkins. And I think it turned out really fun. And I love the look of the burlap there behind the letters. How cute is that? And all of our little pumpkins. The lighting wasn't great in my entryway when I took that, but some of those pumpkins are blue. Kind of hard to see in that lighting though. 
Okay, next DIY. I found this great vase at Dollar Tree the other day and I thought it would be perfect for fall because it is this very nice soft color of orange. It's got like the little circular indentations all over. I'm gonna add some burlap to mine just to kind of go with my burlap vibe today. I try to use burlap in all of my DIYs. So I'm gonna use the burlap ribbon from Dollar Tree and just kind of make like a little cuff to go around the middle of it. Just to add a little bit more texture. Break up some of that orange. So I just cut down the ribbon to size and we're just gonna hot glue that right here in the middle part of my vase. I do add a little bit more to that at the end. I probably should have done it at this step, um, but that's what it looks like so far. And I thought we could do a super easy little fall arrangement. And I picked up those blue velvet pumpkins on a pick at Dollar Tree the other day. And I thought it'd be really cute to combine that with some Dollar Tree lamb's ear. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use Dollar Tree sand. I'm gonna use white. Doesn't matter because you're really not gonna be able to see it. But I thought that'd be the easiest way to arrange these in the vase. So I love the Dollar Tree lamb's ear. Look how cute this is for $1.25. I was so thrilled when they started getting these in at one of my stores. Every time I see some, I try to pick them up. They have a couple different sizes. I think this is one of the larger ones. And so there's like two um, sprigs on each one. So I'm just gonna cut those off individually so that we can kind of arrange them in there. And they look so high quality. I know you don't, you know, exactly think lamb's ear for fall, but I use it for every season. I think it's so pretty. It's so velvety and it always goes well with like coastal decor for sure. But I thought it would look really fun combined together with those blue pumpkins. So we're going to use all two um, bundles of the lamb's ear there. Just kind of arranging them. I decided I probably needed a little bit more sand because I cut them fairly short. And, and just push those down in the sand to arrange them. Easy peasy. And then the little blue velvet um, pumpkin picks, nothing I have to do with that one, but I thought it was a little bit long. Now I tried to trim it and it must be because there's like so many wires in there. I did try it and I was like, this is too long. So I did have trouble cutting it. I couldn't find my floral scissors from Dollar Tree. So I was trying to do it like by bending it. I ended up grabbing them with a pair of pliers and twisting it. And that was the ticket. <laughs> it was way too hard. And then I'm just gonna kind of put the little velvet pumpkins down inside my lamb's ear. Super cute. They even have like a little curly tendril in there. And it's just a fun mix of colors and um, textures on this project with the velvet, with the lamb's ear, we got burlap, we got that fun textured little fall vase. Then I decided that the burlap needed one more thing and I thought this lace ribbon from the Dollar Tree could be the perfect finishing touch. And I know it's kind of hard to see because I've already put sand and flowers in there, but this is what the ribbon looks like and I'll show you kind of how I put this on here and how it looks in the final reveal. So I'm just gonna use that same seam that we use for the burlap, glue it on, wrap it around, and glue it to itself. Just another little fun texture and color to this fall DIY. And this is how it turned out. Look how pretty those pumpkins are in that lamb's ear. It's kind of unexpected. I think it's really fun for fall though. It's very colorful. And let me show you how this looks from a distance. Isn't that cute? I think it's really fun. I love lamb's ear. Okay, the next DIY is gonna be so easy. I picked up one of these like bluish mint green long glass candles from the Dollar Tree. We're gonna decorate this with some burlap and some window clings. I found window clings at Dollar Tree this year and they seem to give you way more. Because for $1.25, you get two sheets. So you get like the sheet on the front. You also get the sheet on the back. Isn't that like more than you used to get for a dollar? I, I feel like it's more. So we're going to use these. They're so cute. I love that they already incorporate like blue pumpkins and blue gourds and stuff in there. And I see the perfect window cling in there. 
And doing a window cling on a glass candle from Dollar Tree couldn't be any easier because it's glass, of course, right? So I'm going to decorate part of the candle with that. I'm also going to decorate part of the candle with that burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. So this is the one that I had my eye on. The colors are perfect. It's going to match my burlap. It matches my candle. I just kind of find the prettiest side of the candle because they're not all equally pretty <laughs> and just put it on. I'm not going to glue it or anything. That way when it falls over, if I haven't used the candle up, I can switch it out for another season or just remove it all together. But I'm going to do the burlap on the bottom. It's going to be a little bit more permanent. And I just cut enough to go around the candle. That way um, I can burn it. I'm not going to have to worry about um, this being too close to the flame or anything like that. And I just glue it to itself here on the back of the candle. I love decorating these long candles from the Dollar Tree. There's so many things you can do with them and they come in great colors as well. Now this burlap ribbon kind of had something in it. I didn't really want to redo it. So I thought, you know what? Maybe I can just grab it and pull it out. And that's exactly what I did. Um, it was just like this dark strand. Of course, it was like right on the front of mine. But easy peasy. Just pulled it right out. And then I wanted a little bit of burlap around the top as well, but I wanted something a little smaller, something again, that's going to stay away from the wick of the candle. So I decided to use some burlap trim from the Dollar Tree. But first I noticed that there was a little bit of printing on there. Like it says where it was made and stuff like that. So I'm just going to use some fingernail polish remover and it wiped right off. It was like a stamp. On the candle, I just didn't want that to be there in the final project. And here is the burlap trim. They're all beautiful. I kind of use all of them pretty equally. I decided this one might be cool. Kind of goes back and forth. And I'm just going to do it right there at the very top of where the candle is in the jar. That way it's not too close to the top. And I'm just going to glue that on too, just for another little dose of burlap and a little bit more decor for fall. Isn't that cute? I love these candles. They're so fun to DIY. And I love those window clings. They're so cute. So this is how it turned out. Do you have a little bit of bubbling in that window cling? I think it should smooth out though, especially once I start burning it. <laughs> but I really like the burlap on the bottom and I love the colors of it. Okay, let's keep crafting. Check out this beautiful light blue crackle pumpkin I got at Dollar Tree the other day. I love it. It's a little shinier than I normally like, but I love it so much. I'm going to leave it as is. And I found it's the perfect color to go on one of these light blue candlesticks from the Dollar Tree, which I love these too. I always try to pick these up. And a pumpkin on a stand is even better. So, of course, I want to add a little burlap. Don't have a lot of room for burlap on this DIY, but I have a tiny space where I can add some burlap trim right there at the top of this candlestick. And it would be cute on the one that's like um, half blue, half white as well. Um, this one is my favorite though. I always pick up these candlesticks whenever I see them because they're the perfect color of beachy blue. So I just glue the burlap trim all around the bottom and then I just need to attach my pumpkin to the candlestick and display it on the pedestal it deserves because it's so beautiful, right? So it's made out of ceramic, so glass on glass. I'm gonna use E6000 um, just to make sure that this is good and secure. So I just put some of that on the bottom of my ceramic pumpkin and it fits perfectly on this candlestick. So I just lay it straight on there and we're gonna let that dry. Now I love the blue on blue because it's the same exact color. I think it matches really well, but I thought we could add a little bit more like burlap. Maybe if we try to decorate the pumpkin stem. Cause I definitely don't want to mess with beautiful pumpkin itself. So to do that, I'm going to use just some Dollar Tree twine and we're just going to wrap the pumpkin stem just to bring a little bit more color and texture into this project. So I start at the base just hot gluing that in place and I just start wrapping that 
kind of right next to itself. I don't really want any of the blue to shine through, but I do have to kind of go around the curved stem. So I do use hot glue here and there to kind of keep it in place and to keep it from kind of sliding off the tip. And I just keep doing that all the way until I cover all of the pumpkin stem. And I'm glad I added that because um, it's such a beautiful piece. I think this really added a little something fun to it. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to do a quick burning of any of the fuzzies off of the twine just to clean it up. And I think this DIY is so much fun. Um, if anytime you put a pumpkin on any kind of a display, like a candlestick or something like that, it really just kind of makes it the star of the show. And, and when you can get a pumpkin like that for $1.25, you want to display it. Look at that. I love the crackle finish. That's why I kind of left it glossy. I definitely didn't want to take away from that beautiful finish. And this image from my phone really shows the crackle well. And our little blue candlestick with the burlap trim. Isn't that adorable? I just love it. And it's so easy to mix in with any decor. Okay, the next DIY, we're gonna DIY one of these Dollar Tree foam pumpkins. I always prefer the white ones. Or I find them kind of the hardest ones to find. Um, especially if I'm gonna use something that you can kind of see through, which I am, because we're gonna use burlap on this one. So what I do is I just pop off the foam stem and then I'm just gonna use my scissors to cut, you know, a fairly decent size hole here, right in the top. And then we're gonna use Dollar Tree burlap to wrap that. So I'm not gonna iron in this one because um, I don't think it's really gonna matter because we're gonna be wrapping it tight around this pumpkin anyway. You really kind of need a square and the burlap is kind of a rectangle. So I was kind of seeing how much I could cut off of the burlap to save for later. And it was about this much. So I'm just gonna try to cut a straight line here. This is what makes it easier to starch it is when you go to try cutting it <laughs> and it's all folded up on you. But we made it work. And now I have a square of burlap that we can cover that pumpkin. And I wanted to do a fun little burlap and succulent pumpkin with this DIY. And it was so easy to DIY. Now, as you can tell, the sides are a little short, but that's okay. I'm going to use my hot glue and just glue to the foam just as high as I can get it on both sides. And I'll have enough overlap um, from the other side to get that to cover. This side was kind of falling apart on me. But I kept trying and got it glued on there. Now this side's plenty long enough. And so I'm just going to go ahead and start shoving that in the middle using my scissors. And I do that from both sides. And now we have like four little corners like sticking up. And that is what we're going to use to cover the area that wasn't covered before. So I cut off any excess fabric because there's no need to like cram tons of fabric down inside the, of the pumpkin. You just need enough that's gonna get it to hold tight. And you wanna grab it and, you know, kind of crease it where it'll sit nicely right against the sides of the pumpkin and just put the rest of the material there in front. So I definitely trim off the excess fabric on all four sides. And when I'm doing this, I am making sure I'm covering, trying to cover the bald spots. I don't really have to cover the bald spots on the very top though, because we're gonna cover the top of this with succulents from the Dollar Tree. So this is my fourth and final side. Now I'm gonna leave this as is, but you could also wrap it with like some twine if you wanna get like each section of the pumpkin, you know, lineated, but I think it looks good enough. Now I picked out three of the different succulents from Dollar Tree. I picked out a blue one, kind of an ivory one, and kind of like a honey colored one. And I thought three of them would be perfect on top of this. Now these are all built different. This one didn't have a stem when I pulled it off. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use hot glue and glue that towards the back of that hole that we put the twine, we put all the excess fabric in. And the other two I have to kind of snip off the stems. Because I'm going on top of the burlap, so I can't easily stick it through the foam. And so we're gonna attach all three of them with hot glue 
just kind of having them overlap slightly. And it's just going to be a really fun look with a little succulent pumpkin. And I've actually made a whole pumpkin out of succulents. I'll have to post that DIY soon too. It turned out really cute. Now I think that looks really cute and decorative for the top of it. I did think it needed like a little bit more decoration though. So once I got all those on, I'll show you what it looks like. And then I'm going to add a little bit of Spanish moss. So it's looking pretty cute already. I think you can definitely tell that it was a pumpkin. And this is just Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. I always try to save this if I can after I use it for a project. And I'm just going to take little tiny bunches of it and hot glue that to our burlap, just kind of coming out wherever the little succulents come together. If you had some succulents that like hang down a little bit, you can kind of use that as well just to give it a little bit more decorative touch. Anywhere you kind of have a gap. I think that looks pretty good. I think this little DIY is ready to go. Isn't it cute? It was so easy to make. I did a burlap DIY last year too of a pumpkin that I did the little jack-o'-lantern basket in, in between. So when you turn on the light inside, it glows a jack-o'-lantern face through the burlap. So that was a fun DIY as well for Halloween. And this is how it turned out. I think it's so cute. I love DIYing the little foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. I had this one left over from last year. I haven't found any yet this year, but they have them every year. So hopefully I haven't seen them yet because they haven't got Halloween yet, out yet. Okay, this next DIY, I wanted to make a fun candle holder. And I'm going to use one of these jars from the Dollar Tree. This is like the big square one from the kitchen section. And I wanted to try a technique on this. I wasn't sure if it would work and it kind of fought me a little bit, but I wanted to try to use a window cling as a stencil. So I wanted to have a pumpkin cutout on a glass jar um, where you can kind of see through that cutout and then I'm gonna paint the rest of the jar. So I found this pumpkin one and I thought it was the perfect size. Now I went back and forth whether I should just put it down as a decal or whether I should Mod Podge that down. And I went with just a decal. And I did have issues with this DIY. Um, and I wonder if I would have had the issues if I used Mod Podge. I don't know, you might wanna use Mod Podge if you're gonna use one as a stencil. But I wanted to try to use something from the Dollar Tree to make a stencil with. And so this is what we're gonna do. Now, normally I would say spray paint this. It would be so easy to spray paint this, right? But I live in Florida and it was a monsoon outside. I mean, pouring um, today. So there was no way I could spray paint anything. So I had to use acrylic paint. Now I'm using Cloudless um, acrylic paint by Apple Barrel. And I thought maybe if I do enough thin layers, <laughs> we could get fairly good coverage. It was hard to paint. I did dry between each coat. Um, to try to not mess it up. One thing I noticed when painting on glass with a brush, you know, is that sometimes you can be painting and then you'll be rubbing off the paint underneath of it, which kind of made it a little bit tricky. And I did like the cool, like almost concrete texture I got in the end, but it, it wasn't easy. I would say spray paint. And I had this color almost in spray paint too, but I think spray paint is going to give you a even coat and it might work better where the issue is I have with the decal. So I just kept doing thin coats. That's what I'm talking about there where it starts taking your paint off. Ah, oh, so frustrating. But I kept going over it and over it. I think I lost count, like maybe four coats of acrylic paint and just doing all the sides. I don't really need to do the top of the jar lid or the very bottom. And I think that's good enough. And then here was the test. Can I peel off the window decal? And at first things seemed to be going fairly well. It was at this point where it started to taking off the fabric or the, the paint underneath the decal. And 
I noticed that I tried to like stop the damage and kind of push that back down. But as you can see, it did take off too much paint. But we're gonna try to go with it. I thought, you know, I've already put four coats of paint on this jar. I'm gonna pull through. Sometimes, you know, you can get a DIY fail and you're like, ugh, should I throw this in the trash can? And then I was like, no. I've worked too hard on this. We we're gonna finish this DIY and I'm glad that I did. So I'm just using a tiny brush and that same paint, going over several more layers, trying to, um, you know, paint the bottom back on my pumpkin. Kind of make it look a little bit more like it was supposed to. And then I actually liked the texture so much I thought I would add more texture to it. So I'm just using a chunky brush from Dollar Tree and that same paint we used before. And I am just stippling all over. Um, a couple of coats of that just to add more texture to it because I really liked it being kind of um, imperfect. It gave it kind of a cool feel. Okay, it's time to make this into a candle holder. I'm gonna try to clean up the glass here to make sure it's clean and um, remove my fingerprints. And then you could use like little pebbles for the inside in a candle. And that would be really cute if you're gonna use it outside or I'm gonna actually use sand in mine. Now, since I've done burlap on every single one of my DIYs, I wanted to kind of continue the trend. And so to cover like the screw marks on the side of the jar lid, and since I didn't paint the very top of it, I am gonna use some more of that burlap trim and just wrap that around the top of it. So just a little bit of hot glue here. Again, I'm gonna burn real candles in this. And so I don't wanna do anything that's gonna be um, flammable. So I kind of go around the bottom of it to kind of keep it out of the way. But again, covering up the screw part on the lid. Now it's time for the candle and some sand. I'm gonna use a white votive candle from Dollar Tree. You could also use a tea light in this pretty easily if that's what you have. And I'm gonna use brown sand, um, my favorite, cause it'll kind of go with my coastal decor. But again, pebbles would be really cute too for fall. And you know, you could do this jar with like a leaf cut out as well. Um, and you could do it any color you like for your fall. So I just put a little bit of sand in there and then press the votive down inside. That way when it lights, it's gonna light up the little pumpkin window that we left clear glass. I thought a little bit more sand and this was ready to go. And this is how it turned out. I think it's cute. I'm glad that I didn't give up on it because it was definitely probably my most challenging DIY today. But I think that you can tell that it's supposed to be a pumpkin, I hope. <laughs> and again, this would be a really cute DIY for outside as well. But you might want to use like a battery operated candle in it if it's outside. But I wanted to show you how it looks glowing at night. Looks really cool, really textured. And it really lights up that pumpkin shape. So a fun DIY. I'm glad that I didn't give up on it because it was challenging for sure. See how bright that is? It's pretty cool, huh? Okay, the next DIY, check out this cool fall sign I found at Dollar Tree the other day. I think this is new this year. I've never seen it before. And it's got like four pumpkins next to each other. And I thought, oh, this is so cute. We could totally remake this and make this look even better, even though it's already cute, right? So the first thing I'm going to do is use heat to remove the leaf and all the raffia bows on here. And then I want to remove all of those letters because it spells out fall and I want my pumpkins to spell out fall too. And so great source of letters. You do have to be really careful removing these though. You know, Dollar Tree used to make things barely glued on. You could just pop stuff off. I really had to work with a, a spatula and heat to get these off without damaging them. And then it kind of chewed up like the pumpkins underneath, but that's okay because we can always DIY the back of the side. So again, carefully get started on these. They're not super thick wood. They're like more like a thick cardboard. So you definitely have to be careful when you're removing these if you want to reuse them. I found that if I get my little, um, that's like a cake decorator from the Dollar Tree that I'm using there. I found if I got that hot enough, 
I could kind of slide it through like butter there, the, the hot glue that they used. Uh, the hardest part was probably just getting started and trying not to take too much paper off the pumpkin below it. And as you can see, this is what it looks like. Kind of chewed up. And I don't really want it even for my back to look like that. So I'm kind of tearing off any of the excess fabric and I'm gonna cover that to try to make that look a little bit better. Now, I think it will look better as standing sign since it's like four pumpkins sitting side by side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the hanger from the back and we're gonna use the back for our front anyway. So we kind of have to clean it up. And it's a way better surface to work on than the other side that's all chewed up from the letters. Just a matter of getting all the staples out. It does leave a few holes, but we're gonna cover this. So as long as I can get it flat, we can get it pretty good to go. And I think it's a great sign to work with. Now I told you I didn't like the back being like that. So to cover it, I'm actually just gonna use some of this removable wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. Doesn't matter which one. And I'm just gonna kind of line that up. Um, and right here on the back of it with the Sharpie. I don't really care about the pumpkin stem parts. I'm kind of avoiding those. And um, just tracing that out. And I can just peel, um, cut, peel and stick this on the back. It's gonna give me a way more finished project. And since I avoided the stems, it made cutting this out a lot easier. So it's just a giant sticker, peel and stick, and the back of our project is gonna look way better. Cause just because just you're using a Dollar Tree sign doesn't mean you want it to look bad on the back. <laughs> So I think that solves our problem. And now we can start decorating the front of these. I wanted them all to be different. I wanted to incorporate, you know, my blue theme. I wanted to incorporate the burlap theme as well. So we're gonna do two pumpkins in bluish color. And I'm gonna use one of these placemats from the Dollar Tree and then two in burlap. So kind of trying to find the sections. They have little square designs on there. Trying to avoid that if I can. And I'm just going to turn my sign over and use that as a stencil to cut out the um, placemat in this beautiful like mint green blue color. And I just use a Sharpie to draw that out. So easy to cut this. I love crafting with these. I think they're so pretty. I always try to pick these up. And these are just placemats from the kitchen section at Dollar Tree. So I'm just going to cut like right inside that line doesn't have to be perfect, but as close as you can get to the size of the pumpkin that you're covering. Like that. And then I'm going to do the same thing. I didn't want the same colors to be next to each other. So I'm going to skip a pumpkin and then do the third pumpkin too. And this one's a little trickier, but you can kind of see um, where it starts and stops on the bottom. See how it's like down a little bit? So that kind of shows you more where you need to go than the top because <laughs> they all slightly overlap each other a little bit. So you kind of have to remember that too, if you're going to cover yours with fabric, you could always paint them different colors too. I think that would be really cute. I'm just doing my best to cut that out since it's kind of hard to know exactly um, where the top is going to be, but I can kind of estimate from the size of the bottom and going straight up. So those are our two bluish pumpkins. And then we're gonna use Dollar Tree burlap bags for the other two. I love crafting with this because it's coated on the back. It's so easy to cut, doesn't fray. So I think it's gonna be great for the other two pumpkins. So I'm gonna turn it this way for the small pumpkin. It's gonna fit in there perfectly. And again, I have to kind of just guess. <laughs> exactly where this starts and stops, but I can get some clues here by drawing on the borders. And this one, I kind of have to guess, you know, exactly where the sides are. But if you cut down here and you go straight to where the bottom cuts off, you can kind of guess where the pumpkin should be. And the burlap ones don't have to be perfect because the blue ones are going to kind of overlap them. It goes all the way down to my seam on this one. I left it on so I could kind of trim it later. And then I actually pulled the thread out because I really kind of needed every bit of that fabric. 
And that is that pumpkin. Now the other pumpkin that I need to cover is even taller. So um, I'm gonna use that same bag, the other half of it, but it's a little, I'm not gonna work that way, but if I turn it sideways, um, it's gonna be long enough. So again, I'm just gonna flip that over, use the pumpkin as a template, trace that and cut that burlap bag down. So you can see why I love crafting with this. I'm always telling everyone, if you see these, pick them up. They're in odd locations. Sometimes they're in the crafter square. Sometimes they're in like home decor. Sometimes they're like in like frames and stuff like that. I found them all over the store. <laughs> but see how they're gonna be, the burlap ones are gonna be kind of under the bluish ones. And so at first I thought hot glue might be a good option for this. And this was probably the only time that hot glue gun couldn't keep up with my crafting. It's because it couldn't really produce enough hot glue because once I did that one, then I tried to do the one next to it and it didn't really have enough hot glue. And then I didn't really like the fact that it was leaving little ridges. So my camera died there. So what you missed is that I switched to this, the tacky glue from Dollar Tree. <laughs> so, because I had trouble on that first blue one with the hot glue and I said, you know what? If I use tacky glue, it's gonna go so much better and it did. So I wouldn't recommend hot glue on that. And I'm just using a baby wipe to kind of smooth that out. But you can see that I glued the burlap ones down first and then I did like the blue placemats on top. Now for the stems, I'm gonna use Dollar Tree twine. I love a good twine pumpkin stem. And they just have these simple square um, stems on there. And I think that's fine because there's so many of them. I just hot glue that to the back and then I just wrap that around till we get to the very top, cut that and glue it. Super easy. I thought about adding little curly pumpkin tendrils to them, but I decided not to just because there were so many of them. I thought it might get a little bit cumbersome. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here on the other three pumpkin stems. I wanted to take a moment to thank you for watching today's video. My last three videos here on YouTube have not done well and I don't know if it's the time of year or if the algorithm is changing or what YouTube is doing, but I don't appreciate it. <laughs> so I really appreciate it. Anytime you can watch a video all the way through, it helps my channel so much. Also, if you like my videos, um, share them, comment on them, all those things really help. I know I like a lot of my viewers watch on TV and I do as well. So I understand that it's hard to do that. But if you ever get a chance to remember to do it on a computer or your phone, I would really appreciate the interaction. So we're gonna finish off this last one. And I think they look pretty good so far. I'm just gonna do a quick um, burning of the fuzzies off the pumpkin stems and then we can uh, decorate this with the fall letters. I did a pretty good job of getting them off without damaging them at all. And so now we just need to paint them. I'm gonna paint them just in this like parchment, like ivory color. And I just do a thin coat on each one of them. Kind of with them to like look like white wood. I don't mind if they're a little bit distressed, but kind of going over a dark color on these. I don't want them to look too dark. So you just do a thin coat, give them a quick dry. And I do that a couple of times to get really good coverage on these. I want these to kind of pop against our little pumpkins that we DIY'd. And then we're also gonna convert that pumpkin sign into a standing sign, cause I think that makes a little bit more sense. So it took about three coats of acrylic to get these good and white. I wanted to make sure that I didn't have any of that original color sh shining through. Okay, it's time to put it all together. I think it looks so cute. So we're gonna just go ahead and lay our letters here on our pumpkins. I think they look cute up a little bit more than that, like right about there and just hot glue these on. Now my board was, uh, my sign was a little bit bowed and the letters were a little bit bowed. And so I was having to like kind of hold them down with the hot glue to make sure that everything is glued on good. And I do kind of get the, the bowing out of the sign um, before I hang it, which is good. 
or make it into a standing sign, which is good, I guess. But I did definitely have to hold those letters down a little bit more than normal just because of the bowing. And I fixed it just by bending it a little bit. And then I'm going to use some of these Jenga blocks from Five Below. I talk about these all the time. I buy them every year, but I just bought some new ones there the other day. So I'm going to show you exactly what the box looks like. You get 63 of these at Five Below, and they're only $12. And they are perfect for crafting with, especially if you want to make a really quick little stand. Not sponsored, but they should be giving me some free ones because I've been using these for years. <laughs> And so I think two is going to be enough. What I'm going to do is just hot glue these on the back. You want to make sure that you don't go all the way to the bottom because you want the sign to be able to slightly tilt backwards. Um, that way it will stay in place. And so I'm just going to do the same thing here on the second one. And I love them because they're so durable and um, they make just perfect stands. And there's so many things you can do with them. Nice and heavy. And so this is how it looks. I did want a leaf decoration before there was kind of a leaf de decoration on there, but I wanted to switch it up with burlap. So I'm gonna use that last burlap leaf that we had from the reef earlier. And all I did was just hot glue it there right on the front of the pumpkin. And this is how it turned out. Our little burlap fall pumpkins. I thought it was really cute before, but I think it's even like amazing now. I love this DIY. I hope you do too. Isn't all the texture on that so pretty? I love how that turned out. Hey guys, I wanted to let you guys know that I've introduced memberships here on my channel at Crafty Beach on YouTube. And for $4.99 a month, you're going to get early ad-free access to my videos and a few other perks as well. And I'd really like to thank all of my members. I'm going to use one of these metal yard stakes from the Dollar Tree. I just popped the little stake off the back of it. It came off really easy. And then I'm just going to use a thrifted sign because I kind of wanted something heavy duty, um, you know, like a hardwood um, sign because the metal sign of the pumpkin that I'm going to put on there is going to be a little bit heavy. Now, this particular thrifted sign is black, so I'm just using like a tan color. I think this is cashew chalk paint on the sides. I just want to give like the sides of the sign like a driftwood appearance, and I thought this would give me pretty good coverage on the side. As you can see, I'm just kind of sloppily painting. I want a little bit of the darker colors to show through. It's just going to give it a little bit more character. And what I want to do is kind of remake that little pumpkin steak and make a really cute little coastal sign for fall. This was so easy to put together. Now I'm just distressing all of that cashew paint with the antique wax by Waverly, just using a chunky brush and a baby wipe. Now I was thinking I probably didn't need to paint over the words on that sign, but, um, cause I'm going to cover it with some of the synthetic burlap from the little bags from Dollar Tree. But as you can see, even though it's thick with backing, you could still see the words through there. So I am going to have to paint that part too. I'm just going to do one coat all over of this color and it's just going to kind of mask the words. I don't want anything peeking through. And I want to do like driftwood on the sides, like burlap on the top, and then we'll attach the metal pumpkin, which we're gonna give a slight makeover. Now, you guys know I love these burlap bags from Dollar Tree. I was checking out the other day with some of these and they were like, how many do you have? And I'm like, how many, I don't know, how many you had? <laughs> I just grabbed them all because I love them. Um, they craft so nicely because they don't fray. They have like a plastic coating kind of on the back and it makes them super easy to cut, but it gives you that appearance of burlap without being quite so messy. I have picked up the synthetic burlap in a roll form from Amazon, but I believe that these bags from the Dollar Tree is a better deal. So I just cut that rectangle down to size just to cover the front of my sign. I wasn't sure how to attach it. I tried hot glue right here in the middle. Um, and as you can see, you could kind of see like the raised 
um, portion where that's going to be. I just wanted something to kind of tack it down. Um, you're not going to be able to see that part because it's going to be behind the pumpkin, but the rest I want to look pretty. So I just decided to Mod Podge that down. And even though there's a plastic coating on the back of that burlap, it does take to Mod Podge well, as long as you give it a few minutes to dry. So that looks pretty good. And now it's time to do a little makeover on our metal pumpkin. I have this metal pumpkin left over from last year. They've had this the last several years. I think they may have changed them up a little bit this year, but they're pretty similar. Like I think the leaves are the same. The texture might be a little bit different. I was just able to finally find some fall decor at my Dollar Tree, but they only had like the fall decor, not the fall crafting materials so far. And I was able to pick up some new yard stakes, but I'm gonna kind of show you this one. Um, I love the texture on this one. I've used this for a lot of DIYs and I just want mine to be like a beautiful, beautiful, like beachy blue. So I like mixed turquoise and white together to give me that soft turquoise color. And I am covering up the orange, which is a little bit harder to paint over than like the ivory ones. Um, but it's probably going to take like three coats of acrylic just to get good coverage on there. Um, I really don't want any of that orange showing through. I want it to look nice and beachy blue. And then my plan is to finish this off with a little Dollar Tree sand dollar on the front. It's gonna give it a beautiful little coastal fall feel. And this was one of my favorite DIYs that I made today. It was a lot of fun. I did get a little blue on my leaves, but you know what? I kind of liked that. So I decided to kind of <laughs> leave the distressing on there a little bit. And I'll go back and distress the leaves a little bit too. Just trying to get the pumpkin blue at this point. And that color turned out really nice. It was very soft. So I decided to distress all over on the leaves with the blue too. And then I also went in with a little white on the leaves as well. And then I am going on the stem with just some antique wax by Waverly. I want it to look kind of grainy, kind of like a real pumpkin stem. You could get the same effect with brown paint, but I kind of like the distressed feel of the Antique Wax by Waverly, and I use that to distress the leaves as well. And it is time to attach it to the sign. Now, since it is a metal pumpkin, it is arched up in the middle, so it doesn't make contact with the sign, so I'm going to have to kind of put something behind it to help it stay. Um, I probably can glue down the stem, but I need just a little brace for the middle. So I'm just gonna use two of the little Dollar Tree mini Jenga blocks on their side. And that seemed about the right depth to fill in the space there behind the pumpkin to help attach this to the front. Now this metal pumpkin is a little bit heavier. That's why I chose the heavy duty sign. Um, and I am gonna use hot glue to attach this. Hopefully it will hold up. Um, you might need to use a different kind of glue. I did go with hot glue Joe, the, just for speed, but sometimes the metal can be a little tricky with gluing things to it, but so far so good. I'm also going to hot glue on a little Dollar Tree sand dollar to the front. These are one of the little sand dollars from the Shore Living line at Dollar Tree. I always stock up for year round use because they are gorgeous. Now, I absolutely love how this turned out. The only issue I had with it is that it did want to fall over. And so I am gonna have to weigh down the bottom just a little bit. I'm gonna do that with one of these little Jenga blocks from Five Below, just to make sure that this does not tip over on me. And it turned out really cute. So here's our little first coastal pumpkin today using a Dollar Tree yard stake and a thrifted sign I got for like $1.50. So cute with the addition of the little sand dollar on the front. I think it'd be really cute with a starfish as well or a seashell, whatever you've got. I love the colors and the textures are fantastic. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to give one of these little Dollar Tree leaf signs a makeover. I found that it was just about the right size to go on one of the little Dollar Tree wood rounds. So what I want to do is do like a coastal like um, Spanish moss leaf. Um, I kind of had the idea in my head. I've never seen anybody do it and I thought we could probably pull it off here. 
Now, I wanted it to have lots of texture. So instead of painting my wood round, I thought I would cover it with one of these like beautiful, like mint greenish blue colored placemats from the Dollar Tree and just cutting that down to size. I just mark that on there with an ink pen and then just cut right on the line. And as you can see, the placemat is a little short for the wood round, but I think I can piece this together and make it look pretty seamless. I can cover most of it in that and then I can go back and use the little scrap piece to fill in the little bottom part and you really can't even tell. I'm gonna go ahead and attach this by just hot gluing the top part of this to it and it's so thick it does really well with the hot glue and I think that's gonna be a nice strong way to keep that on there because we're gonna kind of layer the sign to get to like the Spanish moss leaf. So what I'm going to do for this bottom part is just go ahead and glue it on there. Straight seam to seam, maybe a slight overlap, but not much. And then once I get it glued on there, then I can just cut that down to size. And just a really fun, easy way to cover one of these wood rounds. And I think it turned out really pretty. I'm going to go ahead and poke two holes uh, where the existing holes are in the wood round with just one of these little Cricut weeders. And then I'm gonna use like the existing hanger that came on it. I think that's gonna work fine. It's just a matter of poking it through the placemat and we're gonna have like a really easy background here for the fall leaf. And the colors of this is really light and beachy. I think it goes with a lot of the DIYs that we're gonna make today. And that part is ready. Now for the leaf, I'm using this one just because I don't have a plain wood one. It's whatever you have. The size on this one works great with the wood round. And so it does have a little bump out leaf here on the front. I'm just gonna use a little heat and a putty knife to try to pop that off. I don't really care about damage because that's gonna be my back. I'm not gonna try doing anything with that glitter and stuff like that. I want my fall leaf to be like it's falling, so kind of like upside down like this. And then I'm gonna use Dollar Tree Spanish Moss to cover the leaf. I had some, I always save that when I use it in DIYs because you can usually reuse it quite a few times. And I'm just gonna go over the whole leaf and just hot glue that down. I'm trying to work like maybe one section at a time just so my hot glue doesn't set up. And I'm just kind of doing a thin layer of it. So it gets kind of messy, but I just pull the Spanish moss out, kind of flatten it out into a layer, and then just fill up a section. Um, since the back of the sign is already kind of a brown color, it kind of coordinates with the Spanish moss anyway. So it's okay if some of that shines through, but I'm trying to get as good a coverage as I can. I don't really want like the hot glue to be visible though. So if you get any little globs of hot glue like I just had back there, just melt it with a heat gun. It works really well. I also cover the stem. And once I get it all on there, I just try to go through and um, add a little bit more Spanish moss to any like little bald areas on there and clean up any excess hot glue. Now it's time to give it a little trim, a little haircut. Um, just going all the way around because I still want you to see that great leaf shape for this. And just give it a quick trim. And also shaking off any of the like little Spanish moss that might not be attached all the way to the front because this is going to be a hanging sign. I really don't want any excess material to be able to fall off. The best way to clean up all of that mess is I use one of the little Dollar Tree rollers. A uh, little lint roller, so it picks up all those little pieces really well. Now I want it to go like this. I want it to be like it is a falling leaf. And so I think it is ready to attach to our little background sign. I am just gonna make sure there's no Spanish moss on there that's gonna get caught in my hot glue. And then just hot glue all over the back of my sign. I want it on there really good. And <laughs> dumping off any Spanish moss. It is a little messy to put this together, but once you get it on there, it should all stay put. Now, I want it to look like, you know, almost like seaweed at the beach. I thought it would be really fun to have like little seashells and starfish like in it, kind of like peeking out. 
So I'm gonna use a combination of the little Dollar Tree seashells that you get in the glass bottles and the little tiny starfish. I get these on Amazon and I do have those linked in my Amazon shop below. I love them, they're so fun for coastal crafting. So I'm just gonna do a combination of all of those different kinds of shells, trying to kind of stick to like kind of the white and the tan color scheme and my little like ivory colored starfish as well. And I'm just gonna kind of scatter those all over my Spanish moss. Um, maybe doing like two shells like on each little section of the leaf. Just kind of randomly is scattered along. I don't want too much, but I want um, definitely enough to kind of show that it is a coastal leaf for a fall by the sea. I think that looks pretty good. Um, just cleaning up any drips of hot glue and then I wanna frame the whole thing out with some of the Dollar Tree brown rope. This is the thinner one, I think it's a nine foot. And I am just gonna start this new package. Um, I usually like to do my seam at the bottom, so about right directly on the bottom. I'm gonna start by hot gluing that to the edges. Now I was trying to like kind of show you how I was doing it. So I was kind of hot gluing it like that, but you know, that's not the cleanest way to do it. It's an easier to like, just pick it up and put the glue directly on the sides. I mean, nothing's gonna stick to my silicone mat, but this is definitely a cleaner way to do it. I like to do just one section at a time that we can kind of keep control of it. And I don't want my hot glue to set up. I love framing out these Dollar Tree wood rounds because they make them look thicker um, and like way more substantial. So I'm just gonna follow that all the way around. And this DIY was so fun to make and I think it's so unique. A little Spanish moss um, coastal fall leaf. Just trying to clean it up a little bit. And I think the colors work really well together and I really like the shape made out of the Spanish moss. I think it looks like so beachy and fallish with all that beautiful texture and stuff. And here is kind of a close up view of our little Spanish moss leaf full of seashells and starfish. And I'm not sure where I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna put this in my dining room. I think it's gonna look so beachy and fun for fall. Okay, next DIY. I wanted to give a go at a really fun textured pumpkin sign. So I'm gonna use a pumpkin wood sign from the Dollar Tree. And then I'm gonna use two of these Dollar Tree wall shelves. You guys know I love to craft with these. They make really good signs because they're nice and thick. You can put as many of them together as you want to make as large of a sign as you need. I only need two today. I'm gonna save all my twine and um, rings there. Don't need them for this DIY. I'm just gonna be left with two boards. Now, I thought I would do something fun. Instead of painting the boards for the background, I thought we could try to cover them with this Dollar Tree faux leather in like a whitish ivory color. I never use this Dollar Tree faux leather. I always buy it, I never use it. But I thought I would give it a try and it was so easy to do. Cause it's a nice thick material. It gives you a great texture. And I decided just to cut down a piece for each board. I thought that would make it easier. So I just lay it on the back of the leather using an ink pen to kind of draw around so I can get a custom size here. And it cuts so beautifully. So I'm just gonna trim down the two rectangular pieces there. And that is gonna cover those back signs. Um, it's gonna do a pretty, pretty good job of covering the holes in the side as well. And I have to admit, this was way easier than painting. Now I was trying to think of how I should attach it since it's kind of a thicker material, um, but I don't really wanna melt it. I'm not sure how it holds up to hot glue. So in the end, I decided to use Mod Podge, just a nice thick layer all over. And that seemed to work really well. I'm assuming it's like a polyester material, the faux leather, um, that it would melt with heat, but I'm not sure. I don't think I've 
used heat on it. If I did, I can't remember. So I'm just smoothing that out, making sure it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the top, just a nice thick layer of matte Mod Podge all over and lay this one down. And I'm going to put the two signs together to make a larger sign. So it's nice and thick, so I can just do a bead of hot glue all along the edge. And then I'm just going to stick that right up against the other one to make a nice background sign for my pumpkin. I wanted to do a lot of like really fun textures on this one. And so the leather combined with what I'm going to cover the pumpkin with there um, really made for a fun, interesting piece. Now, this is just a plain pumpkin. You can use whatever you've got. It can be one of the decor signs. It can be a plain one like this. Um, I really like the size of the plain one. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to see if I can make this like a really fun texture, almost like a stuffed pumpkin. So to do that, I picked up one of these little hand towels from the Dollar Tree and that like mint green color that we used before. And we're gonna cover the pumpkin with that. Now I'm not just gonna cover it flat on there. I thought we could also kind of stuff it, make it look like more 3D. And I thought that the towel material would work well for this. Cause you know, it's kind of scratched, kind of stretchy. Now I kind of want to avoid the line on there um, on the right side of the towel that you see there. So that's where I'm starting. I just use a Sharpie to kind of sketch out the pumpkin on the back of the towel there. And then we're just gonna cut this little towel down to size to cover the front of the pumpkin. I love crafting with any kind of material. I can get my hands on at Dollar Tree. I use like kitchen towels, bath towels, bath rugs. I'm always trying to find a different material that I can craft with and towels work really well. It cuts really easily. You're not gonna get hardly any fraying with this material and the color is beautiful. So uh, let me show you how I put this one together. I kind of had to work in pieces so I could give it that like stuffed pumpkin look to give it like more depth. So to do that, I'm gonna use hot glue and I'm just gonna go around the left side, this little section, like the pumpkin kind of has like three little quadrants and just glue that all the way around, laying the towel on top of the hot glue to secure that. Now, once I get that secured, I can start stuffing it. I just want to stuff the left panel first, and I'm just gonna use pillow fluff from an old pillow. Don't need very much, just enough to make this, you know, poof out a little bit. So I just add some stuffing there until I kind of get that section of the pumpkin full. And you can kind of see where the little bump up comes on the bottom, where that section would go um, for the pumpkin. So then I follow that with my hot glue gun, kind of arching my hot glue to make this middle section of the pumpkin. There's really no indication of where that would be on the top. You kind of have to guess. And I hot glue the towel down, just kind of sandwiching in all of the pillow fluff. And it gives it a really nice shape and I think it turned out really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing by stuffing the middle section, gluing down the top and the bottom, and then making sure that like I have enough fluff in there to make it kind of stick up. And I think I do, and I do like the other arch kind of the other way, having it in down there and that little indentation at the bottom securing the top and the bottom a little bit here so I can have a little bit of walls where I can stuff it with a little bit more pillow fluff. And since it's kind of stretchy, you have a little bit of play, you can kind of pull that out if you need to, to hot glue all the way over to the edges. My edges don't have to look perfect because I am going to frame this out in the end, but I want to get as much of the wood covered as possible. Now you could cut this shape out and do the kind of same thing by attaching it directly to the sign in the back if you didn't have a wood pumpkin. But I think anytime you have the wood shape, it just makes it a little bit easier. 
So I just trimmed up the sides and now I want to cover the stem. I kind of avoided that part on purpose because I wanted to cover it with Dollar Tree twine. I attached that to the back with a little bit of hot glue and just wind that all the way around. I'm just gonna use the existing like pumpkin stem that's on there. When you get to the top, you might need to use a little bit of hot glue here and there just to make sure that it stays in place and it doesn't fall off the end. The very end tip here is like kind of the trickiest. And then go back and kind of fill in that little triangular section that didn't have much on it. I think that looks pretty good. We're gonna finish that off with a little bit of hot glue on the back. And then I want to hang the sign. So I am gonna poke two of those holes back in the back sign. I'm um, covered in leather by poking um, two holes in um, the leather. I'm gonna use just Dollar Tree twine to make a hanger. I had trouble getting the twine through the leather, so I had a giant needle. I'm just gonna use that to help pull that through the leather and it did certainly help. So I'm gonna knot mine in the front. I like that the way it hangs better. And I'm just gonna go ahead and string in here the other side and do the same thing. Okay, it's time to put this sign together. The pumpkin's gonna fit on there perfectly. It's a little bit larger with the stem, but I kind of like that. So I just do hot glue all over the back of my pumpkin sign to get it good and secure against that faux leather. This really like terry crock cloth material towel looks great with the texture against that faux leather. Now I wanna kind of frame out like the different sections of the pumpkin that we created with the plush, with the, with the fluff. And so I'm gonna use some of this Dollar Tree burlap trim and kind of fill in the sections. It's really easy to kind of bend this material around that curve that we need. And so I think that's gonna work really well. I'm just gonna do a bead of hot glue right there in like the crevice in between the different sections of the pumpkin that we stuffed. Just kind of working one section at a time to make sure that my hot glue stays wet and then just cutting at the bottom. I'm gonna use the same trim here on the other side to trim out this section and it just really, I think, added a another texture and a little bit of charm to our pumpkin. Now I wanna frame it out and I wanted something a little bit thicker, so I'm gonna use some of the Dollar Tree rope for this. This is the thinner, I think, nine foot brown rope. And we're just gonna frame this. It is gonna help like glue uh, the um, pumpkin to the sign. It's gonna kind of seal the two projects together. So I just start with a little bit of hot glue right here at the top. And then I'm just gonna keep working like one section at a time, gluing that down. And it really did give it a, a finished appearance. I have plenty of room left here on the bottom to be able to glue that to the front of the sign all the way around. And I, that's one reason I love using these shelves. You can really make a custom sized sign like this that fits whatever you're working with perfectly. I'm gonna go all the way to the twine top, um, little pumpkin stem, and glue that down. I think it looks really cute. I did wanna add a few more coastal touches though. This is how it looks with the Dollar Tree starfish. It is super cute, but I decided to use, I had some real starfish that I got on Amazon that are about the same size. And the only reason I'm using that instead is because I kind of like the color, but you could always paint the Dollar Tree ones and get pretty much equivalent thing. I'm gonna go ahead and put hot glue on all the rays of my little starfish. That way it's good and attached to the towel. I want it all secure. I don't want any part of the starfish like hanging off. I want it to be kind of like embedded into that little section of the pumpkin pillow. And then I thought we could use some of this um, Dollar Tree. It's like a, and it's like a mesh ribbon. I think it kind of looks like a fishing net. And I had a couple scrap pieces of that laying around. This is like the tan version of it. I thought we could use that for ribbon along the top. It's gonna give it a nice coastal feel. I cut my down into two pieces and then kind of decided that I kind of wanted it to be connected. So I'm just gonna tie it back together with some Dollar Tree twine. And it's gonna kind of give it that appearance of 
like a bow ribbon where it kind of can come down like on either side like that. So I think that looks pretty good. And then we can decorate it with a few more coastal touches too. So I'm just gonna cut down my excess twine. And then I thought just some small seashells for the top would be cute. So again, I'm gonna use some of these little Dollar Tree seashells that come in the little glass bottles. I like to organize mine in this little toy organizer. It helps make um, have them available and ready to craft with. So I decided to choose like three different ones. And then it's just a matter of hot gluing my little mesh ribbon down. I use that for fishing net probably more than I use anything else for fishing net. I really love it. And then just hot glue the three little seashells here to the top. And this turned out so fun. So many different textures. I love the fact that the pumpkin is like kind of stuffed. So it makes it have like a 3D effect. But it also really adds to all the different textures on this sign. And I think it looks so beachy and fun for fall. What do you guys think about my little kitchen, or I guess it was a bathroom towel, pumpkin? Here it is. You can see that texture of that faux leather on the back and all the texture of the towel. It looks so cute, I think, with the little starfish red on front and the burlap trim definitely adds to the charm. Okay, next DIY, we're gonna do a little makeover on one of these little pumpkin signs from the Dollar Tree. I always love crafting with these because they have a built-in stand. Now this year, it seems like I went to Dollar Tree today that had a lot of fall decor out. I was shocked by how many new items they had this year because they usually bring back the same stuff year after year, but they had a very limited amount. So maybe they only had the new stuff out. I'm not sure, but I am gonna just cover the burlap, kind of sealing all of that glitter that is behind the burlap. I'm not gonna mess with that. I just kind of want to seal that, kind of make that go away. Um, I do tape off my base, but it doesn't really matter because I'm going to go in and kind of distress that anyway. The closest color to burlap that I had was this cashew color. It doesn't really matter. I'm just kind of going all over just to seal all the glitter and to give me kind of, um, you know, a more muted background for the DIY we're going to make today, which is a seashell pumpkin. As you can see, we're going to use those little Dollar Tree seashells again, the ones that come in the glass bottles to cover the entire surface of this pumpkin. Now, I thought the stand was a little too dark, so I am going in and distressing it with that same like cashew color um, just to kind of make it look a little bit more like driftwood, but letting some of the dark color shine through. Once I get all this dry, then we can go start to go in and decorate this little pumpkin with seashells. I kind of wanted to use like all the same color. Most of these are white. Some of them are gray, but I wanted to use kind of the white ones and the tan ones and kind of avoid the gray ones. And I am just putting some hot glue directly on my sign, right where the lip of the seashell would be and just forming a, a line of seashells on there all going the same direction. This DIY was kind of like working with driftwood where um, you kind of had to test a piece to see if it was gonna work. Um, Cause as you can see, there's all different shapes and sizes on these. Some are way bigger, some are way smaller. And I kind of wanted them to kind of fit together a little bit like a puzzle. So I thought that one was a little too big. So we're gonna switch it up to a smaller one. And some rows, I wasn't able to kind of keep that like going in between the two shells below it because of just all the different sizes. But again, like a puzzle, you can kind of make it work. I just kind of wanted a semblance of rows here if I could. I'm gonna use like a nice large one here on the side. And I just wanna fill up as much of the pumpkin as I can. I am continuing like the like pointy side of the seashell down. And what I wanna do is cover the entire pumpkin in this. So it's an easy DIY, but it is a little bit time consuming cause you have to find the perfect shell and then um, glue it into place. And as you can see, the different sizes do work together. So I kinda like it cause it doesn't look perfect into rows and it probably shouldn't. 
And so I just keep gluing all the way up. It did take quite a few shells to do this, especially since I was trying to keep with like a certain color scheme, kind of avoiding the gray ones and any of the like cracked or broken ones. I was really impressed though with how few like cracked ones there really were. And I just kind of keep that pattern, kind of using a small one if I need to, trying to um, kind of go with the gap below this one. I really appreciate you watching today's video. Anytime you watch my videos and you can make it all the way to the end, or if you can't, if you go back later and finish watching the video, it really does help the algorithm and helps my channel to grow. Um, I know I've been doing hour videos since the spring. Some people love that, some people don't. Um, one reason why I switched to one hour videos is because the algorithm really liked it. My channel really started to blow up right about the same time that I switched to one hour videos. But right now, this summer slowdown season, it's really hard to um, get a lot of views on here. So it's really important. The algorithm's really important for anybody to see my videos and for me to be able to keep creating. So I have this way sped up. <laughs> And we're going to finish off the rest of this pumpkin. I'm going to do just the pumpkin. I'm not going to do the pumpkin stem. And it is kind of a heavy pumpkin in the end, but the stand does a great job of holding it up. Now, um, I thought the stem should be a little longer and maybe kind of branch off to the side. So I'm going to use a popsicle stick to kind of make that happen just by attaching one pops popsicle stick end to the front and one to the back, kind of going over to the right. And then that's going to give me a longer pumpkin stem to work with when I go in to cover it with some of this Dollar Tree twine. So I'm just going to start on the back, gluing that on and wrapping it around. I love Dollar Tree twine or rope or anything like that for pumpkin stems. I think it looks really cool and it's definitely coastal. I am going to use a little hot glue um, on both sides just to keep get us started and then just start wrapping this around. And I'm really glad that I extended the pumpkin stem because it definitely gave it a lot of charm. So I'm just wrapping like kind of right next to each other. I kind of want to cover all the surface. And again, when you get towards the end, you do have to use a little hot glue on the popsicle sticks to kind of make that stay in place and not just slide right off. I do want to go all the way on the top of the pumpkin sticks or the pumpkin sticks, the popsicle sticks, um, so that you can't see them. So I just kind of just start gluing the twine to itself just to kind of taper it off a little bit there for the pumpkin stem. Now for the pumpkin tendrils, I'm going to use some of this Dollar Tree wired jute. The end of these is great because it's already got hot glue, I think maybe at the end, keeps it from fraying. So I'm going to use that as my outer end. I'm just going to wrap that around my Cricut weeder to give me a um, little corkscrew like little tendril. And I'm just going to hot glue that wire jute to the back of my pumpkin stem, kind of having the little curly tendrils stick out towards the side. And I didn't want to do too much with decorating this because it already has so much decoration on it with all the seashells, but I thought a little leaf would be cute. Um, these are just like, this is just a plant I had left over from the Target dollar spot. I just wanted a small leaf. And I kind of liked the color of these, so I just peeled one off and I'm just going to hot glue that to the top of my pumpkin. It's a little crooked, but I think we can straighten that out and I think it looks so cute. What do you guys think about my little seashell pumpkin DIY? Look at all the beautiful seashells on there. I definitely wanted to leave them natural like that um, without painting them but kind of keeping everything like a lighter color. And you can see the burlap behind it. It kind of looks like I covered the back of it with burlap and you don't see any of the glitter that it started with. I think it's super cute. I really like this DIY.
Okay, the next fall DIY, I wanted to make a pampas reef. Have you guys seen the pampas from Dollar Tree? They have it in several different colors and I think it's so pretty. Look how many, like how much of it comes like on one sprig for $1.25. I thought I would just go ahead and separate the individual pieces to try to form a, like a small coastal fall reef. So this is just a wire wreath form from Dollar Tree that comes in the little three pack with the three different sizes. This is one of the smaller sizes and I've never worked with Pampas before. So um, I kind of wanted a small project to start with to kind of see how I like it. I think it definitely looks coastal. I was a little confused how I was gonna attach it to this wire wreath form. It might do better with something like um, a grapevine wreath or something a little bit thicker, something that you can kind of put the pieces down into, because the only way I could think to attach it was zip ties. So that's what I'm gonna do for the first layer of the wreath. I wasn't a big fan that you could see the zip ties though. So that's not what I do for like the second round of Pampas, like around the wreath. And I wanted to go, you know, with the arch of the wreath form. So I'm gonna have to attach it twice. So about halfway right here, I'm just gonna go ahead and add another zip tie, um, trying to get like, you know, the grass out of the way before securing that on there. I was hoping that the Pampas would like um, kind of hide the zip ties a little bit and it kind of did, but mm, not so much. So I'm gonna work like in the same direction, kind of overlapping this with the end of this Pampas grass and about halfway up, just zip tying that to it. Continuing around the arch shape of our little wreath form and zip tying the end. And as you can see, you can really see the zip ties. I don't know what the best method would be. I did try um, some of that Dollar Tree twine at first and I thought that was even more visible <laughs> than the zip ties, but I don't know. Have you guys worked with the Pampas grass before and making a wreath or something like this before and have any tips for me? If you do, please leave them in the comments below. I love learning from y'all. And I've made it all the way around here with the Pampas grass. It does kind of make a mess. <laughs> they do like to kind of fall out a little bit when you're working with it. And so I thought it definitely needed another layer for thickness. So I'm gonna use a total of two of the Pampas grass for this one. And I'm just using my floral cutting scissors from Dollar Tree to cut these down. I think they're so pretty. I can't wait to use some of these to display in a vase. I picked up some of the pink ones too. I thought those would be great to save for Valentine's Day in case I can't find them around that time. So this is where I'm gonna overlap. And the only way I could kind of figure out how to overlap without anything visible was just to use hot glue. So that's what I did. I don't know if it was the best way, but it worked. <laughs> so I'm just gonna go around with this layer hot gluing kind of one section at a time. Trying not to make too much of a mess with the hot glue. Because I want the pampas grass, you know, kind of be wild, but kind of be going all the same direction. I don't really want it matted down at all. And I just keep gluing those on one at a time until I get the entire wreath form covered. Now I've seen a lot of people like with like larger like pampas wreaths and stuff like that, just leave it as a pampas wreath. And that is really pretty, but I was going for coastal fall decor with these DIYs. So I wanna decorate mine a little bit. Now, since I like to use blue for my coastal crafting, I wanted to try some fall, some fall items that I had to decorate this with. That's gonna incorporate the color blue. So I thought some of the blue mushrooms from Dollar Tree for the fall section and a, of course, Dollar Tree starfish would be really cute. I'm just gonna hot glue the little white starfish right here, like the bottom left side of my wreath form. And that's pretty lightweight. It's made out of plastic, so I think that's gonna stay on there pretty well. Now for the blue mushrooms, um, they are like nice and chunky. So I thought I could use like one and like cut it in half and that way I would have two little mushrooms to use for it. 
Aren't they cute? I love these. I picked up some of these and did like a Woodland Creatures tear tray last fall with little mushrooms on it. And I love the blue color. Now, since they're foam, I'm cutting mine down with one of those like um, fun noodle cutters from the Dollar Tree. But it was a little difficult to cut through it. I was trying not to damage it at all. Um, it is put together kind of like with glue and like a little toothpick inside. And so that probably had something to do with it, but I was able to get it apart. Um, it did kind of like fall apart, but that's okay. We can always put it back together. And that way we could have two little blue mushrooms to go on this side of the wreath form. The first one was still kind of intact. The second one kind of fell apart on me a little bit, but I'm just gonna hot glue those back together so they will stay together on the side of my wreath. So I'm gonna reinforce this one a little bit. It was still kind of together, but a little extra hot glue couldn't hurt. And as you can see, it does have like a toothpick or something like that in there. Um, you could use that on the other one. I just use hot glue to reattach it. And they're very lightweight foam, so they're gonna be really easy to hot glue to the wreath form as well. And I just kind of want to decorate this bottom left part of the wreath form. And this other one, I'm just gonna have to kind of put it back together by hot gluing it back together, trying to figure out how it goes back together. I think that's right. With just a little hot glue on the inside of the mushroom cap. And mushrooms to decorate for fall, I think that's a really fun idea. I hope that they have these again this year. Uh, again, I haven't seen any of the fall crafting supplies at any of my stores quite yet. Most of my stores don't have anything fall out at all. <laughs> and summer crafting is just a little bit dead. And so I think most of us crafters are ready to get started on fall. Even though it is so freaking hot outside that it's really hard to think about fall. <laughs> now, I asked my son if it needed anything and he said yes. The top right corner of the reef needs something too to balance it out. So I always take his advice. So I decided to continue with my color scheme by using some of the Dollar Tree blue leaves and then maybe a seashell. I like that seashell, but I think it's a little too colorful and I kind of wanted to keep with like the blue and the white theme. And so I found a white seashell and I think that's gonna work perfectly. So I'm gonna use a total of two of the blue leaves. I love these, they have these every year. They do have these this year. They even have purple this year, which is really fun, but blue goes great for coastal. So. I'm just gonna cut the leaf part off and kind of ignore the stem part. That way I can make the leaves go any direction that I want. So I thought like maybe a little blue leaf coming out of each side with a little white um, shell in between. And it's just a matter of hot gluing these down. And I'm glad I added a little bit more to this one. I think it turned out really cute. Again, I have never made a wreath like this, so I wasn't really sure exactly how to decorate it, but I'm glad that I did decorate it. I think it looks very charming. So two blue leaves and a white seashell, and then just a little um, jute twine for a simple hanger at the top. Just kind of feeding that through the pampas grass to make an easy little wreath hanger. And isn't that fun for fall? I think it's so cute. I can't wait to make more things with that pampas grass from the Dollar Tree. It is so pretty and it really reminds me of Coastal. And here it is, our little wreath complete with little blue mushrooms, seashells, and starfish. I think it's really cute. I think this would be a really cute like miniature wreath um, for my entryway. It's not real large. Okay, the next DIY, I wanted to kind of show you a fun way to cover the Dollar Tree foam pumpkins. I'm gonna use a kitchen towel this time. This is one of the kitchen towels from the Shore Living a line from the Dollar Tree, but you can use whichever one you can find. And I wanna show you how easy it is to cover this with it. Um, I'm just gonna break off the little foam stem and we're just gonna cover the whole pumpkin and it's gonna give us this great like seashell, sand dollar, and coral pattern 
to go on our foam pumpkin. So I'm kind of seeing if there's gonna be enough fabric and I think I probably need to cut it down more like a square, um, but it does a pretty good job. It's not completely covering on the sides, but when you pull in the um, sections in between, it covers everything up. So I start by just puncturing a hole in the foam pumpkin and pull the side of the towel up and poke that down inside. Now I'm gonna cut it more like a square because I had way too much material over on that side. And this is the side that's a little short. So I'm gonna go ahead and hot glue that on as close as I can get to the middle on both sides. And then I can go back in on the other side, pressing that material down in the center. Now I have these little sections in between. I just kind of grab um, pull it all together to see how much fabric I have. If I have too much, I just trim off the corners like that, gather it as tight as I can against the side of the pumpkins and just use my scissors to poke that right down inside. I'm gonna go um, to the opposite side to um, pull that nice and tight again, cutting off that corner and pressing it in. I just want the towel to be as close to the surface of the foam pumpkin as possible so it'll really have that pumpkin shape. And now I can do that on my other two sections here, just trimming off the excess material, gathering it and pulling it tight. It's so easy to cover these little foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree and how cute is that? Now we need a pumpkin stem. I like to use these little wood stems from the Dollar Tree. And I wanted one that was kind of a little lighter, something that kind of looks a little bit like driftwood. Um, I was reading a blog the other day that says she saves her pumpkin stems every year and dries them to use them on fake pumpkins. And that's a great idea as well. So I just press that right down inside and that helps to keep all of my fabric secure inside my pumpkin and it also provides a cute little pumpkin stem. Now I thought it needed like a little bit of decorations on top and I decided to do that with a little Dollar Tree Spanish moss, just pulling off a little bit to kind of wind that around the stem. I think that gives it a nice coastal farmhouse feel. And then um, I wanted to decorate it with something else. I have these little blue starfish that I get on Amazon. They're not real starfish. They're like a mold, kind of like the Dollar Tree ones, but they're smaller and I think they're the perfect shade of blue. So I'm just gonna hot glue one of those to the top of my pumpkin and this DIY could not be any easier and it turned out so cute. I love all the print on there. You might be able to do that with the Shore Living tablecloth as well. It's a little bit thinner, but it has that same um, design on there. And it's a lot easier than decoupaging a pumpkin. And you get that great texture from the towel. This is how my little kitchen towel pumpkin turned out with coral, sand dollars, and starfish all over. This is kind of a close up view of that beautiful texture. And this is how it looks. Hey guys, I'd like to take a moment out of today's video and let you know about my Facebook group. Um, I always have it linked in my description below. We'd love to have you over there. You'll find out when I post new videos and you'll get to see what everyone else has been crafting. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, and a Facebook page at Crafty Beach on YouTube. I wanted to try out some of this frosted film from Dollar Tree um, to see if I could do like kind of a frosted fall sign. This is the one, it's got like a leaf or like floral print all over it. I also picked up a Dollar Tree picture frame. I thought maybe we could do like a cool fall sign and instead of Cricut vinyl, we could actually use that window film from the Dollar Tree and see if we could get the Cricut to cut that out. So um, I just got a Dollar Tree frame. It doesn't matter which one, I just kind of wanted a lightweight one. And I am gonna go ahead and use the glass from that frame. Um, so I'll know exactly how much of this to cut out. I thought this would probably be the easiest way to do it. So I'm just gonna kind of sketch the glass on the back of that window film. Um, I got some spray paint, like frosted paint the other day that I am anxious to try, maybe for some Halloween DIYs. And I wanted to kind of try this frosted film because um, they've had this at Dollar Tree for a couple of years and I have never made anything out of it. 
So I'm using my light grip mat because I know how materials from Dollar Tree are. They really like to stick to Cricut mats, at least with their vinyl. So not taking any chances here. I'm just going to put that down, film side up, paper side down. Um, making sure that it is good and flat before I put it in my Cricut. And I'm just going to do a simple like fall cutout with that. While that's cutting though, we can go ahead and start on the frame. I just want to have the glass in there, have a frosted glass in there, so I don't need a back. So I just pulled out all of the little metal tabs, um, making sure not to break my frame. Now the frame is plastic, but it's got this great texture on it that kind of looks like wood. And I'm going to try a new color today. This is called Golden Sunset. It is by Apple Barrel. I picked it because it was really close to that like honey color that's really hot for fall. Now on my first coat here on the frame, I did add a little bit of ivory to it to lighten it. I felt like maybe I lightened it too much because it is kind of supposed to look like a honey tone. And so I'll show you how I darken that back up some so that I can still use it. I gave it a quick dry and then this is how I'm going to darken it back up. Just some antique wax by Waverly, which kind of gives me a little bit more brown tone to it. But I'm going to go with it. I think it's a good color for fall and I want to do a lot of traditional fall colors today. Nothing too bright and crazy. Um, but for those of you that want to do more like traditional fall decor and we have 10 DIYs. Now I want the frame to stand up. So I'm going to use one of these chunky slat boards from the Dollar Tree. I'm not going to cut it or anything. I think it's going to be perfect. I can attach the frame to it, but I want it to match. So I just give it a coat all over of that same like golden sunset color. And I love the wood grain on that frame because it kind of really makes it look like wood, even though it's not. Now for the glass, I want to make sure that I get it really good and clean. Um, I think that's really important. We add any kind of frosting to any kind of glass. So I just made sure that I got pretty much everything off of it. And then we can start working on our window film. The image that I designed was just a fall tree that has like lost all of its leaves. And I thought that would be really pretty on here for a cutout. So I just pulled that out and we're going to attach the rest of the film to the glass. Now, since there's still small pieces cut out in there, I am going to have to use transfer paper. So I just use my paper transfer paper that I use for Cricut Vinyl and um, use that to transfer that over to the glass. So just like vinyl, I just make sure it is stuck down. And the, the setting that I used on my Cricut to cut this was called window decal. Um, I had some trouble with that. I think there was a glitch with the, the Cricut design space system where you can't choose custom materials. I had to like set it up on my phone, which I'm not used to having to do. But I just lay my glass right onto it and then flip it over, scraping it down, and then I just peel off my transfer tape, keeping it nice and flat against it while I pull it off, and make sure I don't take any of the frosting film with me. And it turned out so cool. Do you see that cool tree cutout? I think that combined with like the leaf pattern on there really looks fun for fall. So it was a success. First time I've tried the frosting film. I think this um, can have lots of good applications. I think there's a different print of this too. Maybe like a diamond print. So I like it better with the film on the back. I was kind of trying to decide. You can really see the leaves and stuff if you have it on the front. But if you flip it over, it gives you more of the frosted look, I think. So I'm going to put it in there with the film on the back. So just kind of testing that out. But isn't that cool? I, I'm going to have to use it again because I think that was really easy. I didn't wet the glass or anything to avoid air bubbles, but I really only had like maybe one or two and I was able to scrape those out pretty easily. So now it's just a matter of attaching this to the frame. We took out the staples in the back, so we're going to have to use a little hot glue to attach it. And my new hot glue gun that I was so excited about, not working great, so... Might have to send that back and get a new one before I put that in my shop because I don't want to recommend it if it is not going to work right. But I was able to hot glue that into my frame. And now it's just a matter of attaching it to the base that we made. I saw a few bubbles in there. And luckily the film's on the back. 
And I think that kind of looks better too. Um, I was able to just scrape those out. And the frame is so lightweight because it's made out of plastic that um, I think this is going to be really easy to brace. And I'm just going to do it with hot glue. So I just do a bead of hot glue along our um, craft board there from the Dollar Tree and then just sit in my frame sticking straight up, maybe tilted back a little bit. For this step, you'll just have to kind of hold it until your hot glue dries. You can use a stronger glue for this, but mine seems pretty sturdy. Wasn't that easy? I think that's a really fun fall idea. It just kind of came to me and I thought um, we should give it a try. Now for an even cozier fall vibe, I thought well maybe one of these battery operated candles would be really pretty behind it, glowing through the frosted glass. And this was really hard to photograph. My normal location, you really couldn't see the tree cut out. So I'm kind of showing you how it looks here up against my walls, which are a little bit darker. So you can see that great cutout of the tree. And then um, this is kind of how it looks all together. Isn't that sweet? I really like that tree design and I will share that Cricut file with you so you can cut that out yourself. And this is kind of how it looks with a candle behind it. Really hard to take a picture of this with the frosted cutout. But doesn't that look cozy for fall? I think that's really fun. I love the simplicity of the tree as well. Now, look at this beautiful sign I found at Dollar Tree. The only thing is Dollar Tree doesn't know how to spell. <laughs> but that's okay. We're just going to remove the misspell tag. It's so cute. It's a shame that they messed that up. But I'm just going to remove all of that. I'm also going to remove the hanger because I kind of want to layer this sign with another Dollar Tree sign. This one here. I liked this one because it had the dark wood behind it with the light wood frame, which matches the light wood on my pumpkin. But... I thought we could take some Cricut vinyl and redecorate that pumpkin really easily um, to make it say something that is spelled correctly. So I took the little hanger out of the side of my back sign just because it kind of sticks out and there's really no need for it. And then I'm also going to just kind of clean up some of the excess glue here on the sign. Isn't the sign beautiful though? I love the color. It's got kind of that honey color um, on it as well, which I'm gonna try to focus on a lot today. Most of the DIYs have that. I thought to make the stem look a little bit better, I'm gonna use just some Dollar Tree twine and just wrap it. But again, that hot glue gun was not working for me. I did have to switch back to my regular Ryobi one and I'm a little disappointed. I don't know what's going on with this one. But hopefully I can get um, get that fixed because I kind of like the um, ability to do like small amounts of hot glue like that where my other one shoots out a lot. So I just wind it all the way up using hot glue to kind of keep it on there. It was kind of, you know, at an extreme angle, but I like that part of it. Then I'm just going to burn off the fuzzies. And then I went to my Cricut and cut out of my favorite matte white vinyl. I get this stuff on Amazon. It's available in my shop, as is my paper transfer paper. And then I just cut out some words to go on the pumpkin. It's going to say Autumn Vibes. Try not to take the dot of my eye with me there when I weed that out. But I love this matte white vinyl because um, there's no gloss at all. It very much gives you the vibes of a hand-painted sign, but it's a lot easier than working with stencils. So this is my six inch paper transfer paper. I'm just going to use that to apply that to the adorable pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. There's plenty of room on here for whatever you want it to say. And I'll share this Cricut file with you as well. Um, I, you might have to be a member to use this one. Um, I will see what I can do. So there it is. It doesn't like pretty with like the white floral print on the bottom part of the pumpkin, the white writing on there. Now, since I wrapped the stem, it kind of sticks up a little bit there, more so than it does for the frame. So I kind of want it to look 3D anyway. So I'm just going to use a little Jenga block from the Dollar Tree just to give me something to glue that part of the sign to. And then at the top, I will just glue the pumpkin stem to the frame. And I think that looks really cool. 
The only thing I didn't like were the holes in there. So to kind of disguise those, I thought we could use some of these velvet push pins from the Dollar Tree. They're a very um, similar color to the wood. And I'm just going to attach them with hot glue right into the holes. Problem solved. And it kind of gave a, another cute vibe. And then I thought it needed a leaf. And so I decided to use one of these little craft board leaves from the Dollar Tree. I think any of these would be cute, but I thought this one was my favorite. I like the fact the wood is, or the color on it is very similar to the wood on that back sign. So it's very, again, it's kind of compliment. And we have all these warm colors on here with all the different colors of wood and that like pretty honey color. And I love that bead trim along the front of that pumpkin. I think it looks so cute. But this DIY was so easy to put together and a quick fix for a little Dollar Tree typo. Now, I did notice that mine was not hanging straight and I don't know if it's because I attached the pumpkin to the front. But to fix that, all I'm going to do is just move the existing hanger over a little bit in one direction and that seemed to fix it. And there it is, our little autumn vibe sign. I love this. I think it's so pretty. Um, you know, it's got like that honey color, but it's not real loud. I would call it still kind of like more neutral. And I think it's just beautiful. It's got like that wood grain that kind of continues in that print below. And it was so easy to DIY by just adding some Cricut vinyl to it. You could always hand paint some words on there as well. I think that'd be really pretty. Okay, the next DIY, I want to do a wood round, kind of a wood round wreath. And so I'm going to use a Dollar Tree wood round. Mine is not so flat, but we're going to make it work. And I want to use a Dollar Tree decal for that. But first, I'm going to paint it that same golden sunset color. And this time I'm going to leave it as is. It's very similar to the honey color that I'm trying to get. And then I just kind of wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. So I still get that beautiful wood grain coming through. And then mine was a little rough. So I gave it a quick sand as well. Because I want it to be nice and smooth so that I can attach the window decal to it. Now to do that, I just put down a thin coat of Mod Podge kind of all over. And I'm going to use this round one that says Hello Fall. It has a clear background, so I think we can make this work and kind of melt into the sign. This is a great option if you don't have a Cricut machine um, to personalize your sign. Super easy. Now, I smoothed mine out with a paper towel, but I also don't like that glossy appearance on there. I want it to look like it's part of the sign. And so I Mod Podge over the entire thing as well basically going edge to edge on the sign because you won't, don't want it like a different in like finish between the decal part and the wood sign, but it is super glossy. So it does take several coats to really mask a window cling when you use it on a wood product like this. But if you do like two or three coats of this, um, you're really going to get that sheen. So you can kind of see how much the glossiness has went down with the first two coats. But I'm going to give it one more coat just so that I'm happy with it. Now, I said like a reef sign because we're going to kind of create this like that. Um, while I still have access to the holes on the wood round, I'm just going to go ahead and take some Dollar Tree twine and string that from the back and just knot it in the front. Um, I like to hang it better that way. And um, the original hangers that come with this, you kind of have to hang the other direction. But actually, for what I end up doing to this, you probably wouldn't even be able to notice. Now, the leaves that we're going to use for, are from the Dollar Tree. And it's this big pack of like 50 maple leaves. It's got like all different colors. It's even got like some like burlap ones. And I think there's going to be plenty to like make a leaf reef to go around the Hello Fall sign. And we're just going to attach it straight to the wood round. No separate wreath form just to make it easier. And I'm going to kind of do a pattern. So I kind of started with a burlap one. And then I'm going to do like one of each color of the leaf. Kind of creating a pattern, if you will. Um, having them all go the same direction, slightly overlapped. Just gluing those down with a little bit of hot glue. And the colors are really loud right now. Like if you like that look, you're going to love this. I thought it was too bright. 
And so I did a technique on mine to tone it way down. So I will show that to you in a minute. Now, when I went through all the leaves, I did another burlap, which was a different color, repeated the same pattern, and then I'm just gonna keep repeating that all the way around the board. I was able to keep the pattern going, so that was kind of cool, um, just by kind of spacing it out when I got towards the end. But just talk gluing around the whole thing to give you that like grief feel. And I think this is a really easy way to do like a um, wreath for your front door or a wall hanging for your entrance um, with just one Dollar Tree sign. Now, this is what I was talking about. I'm gonna take like some tannish paint and mix it with water. And I'm gonna use a brush for this. What I wanna do is mute all the colors in the leaves. You see how bright it is right now. Like it's really bright. And nothing in my decor is bright like that. So I think it's really gonna stand out. So basically all I'm gonna do is I'm kinda like whitewashing all of the leaves with that paint, with that watered down paint. And I, I don't really wanna get too much of it on the sign, but if I do get some of it on the sign, I don't really mind. But you can already tell, even while it's still wet, how much that mutes the leaves. I think it just made them look more high end and um, way more like of a neutral color because it was, it was just a little too loud for me. So I got one coat on and dry. I decided to add a little bit more tan to my water um, to make it a little bit thicker because basically the leaves are just kind of like soaking that in and um, they get kind of really wet and then you just have to dry them. I'm just using my heat gun to dry them to speed it up. But as you can see, I went pretty heavy with that coat because I really wanted the colors to be muted and I am giving them a good dry with my heat gun. It really changed the appearance on this. I'm just using a paper towel just to kind of mop it up, make sure I got everything dry on there. And I like it way better now. That's kind of a comparison before and after. So whichever style you like better, um, if you like the muted, that is a technique you can use, but it's as easy as that. We have our little hello fall reef sign, and this is how it looks hanging in my home. I really love using window decals from the Dollar Tree to make custom signs like that. That was so easy to do. And I really like the muted vibe of those leaves. That's much more my style. But I think it's really pretty for fall. What do you think? Okay, next DIY, I picked up this little pumpkin sign at the Dollar Tree the other day. It does have a little bump out autumn word. Unfortunately, it's like really just cardboard. So I don't think there's much um, luck on saving it. I'm just going to pop it off with heat and a putty knife. I just wanted this reform. It was just the right size for me. I don't really care about the image or anything that's on there because I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted to see what it would look like if I covered one of these pumpkins from the Dollar Tree with some of their new macrame cord. You guys know I love this. I've been crafting with this stuff all the time and I thought maybe we could kind of get like the sweater look vibe on the front of this with the um, macrame cord and so that's what we're going to try to do now this pump pumpkin has like three sections so we're going to do like kind of one section at a time i just start by hot gluing along the top of the pumpkin and then going around the outline of the pumpkin and what i'm going to do is i'm going to end up doing like three ovals which is going to cover the whole pumpkin so I'm going to just get started with the left side. I put down like a whole bunch of hot glue to try to speed me up. But honestly, I don't know if that really speeded me up or not. But you do kind of have to hot glue um, here and there to make sure it is going to be stuck to it. But I'm just going to repeat that same spiral pattern all the way on this section of the pumpkin until we fill the whole thing up. I've done something similar with um, the Dollar Tree like white nautical rope like unwoven with other DIYs and so I thought we could try to do this for a pumpkin and I really love how this turned out. Now it is a lot of hot gluing so be careful and don't burn yourself and now I'm just going to start doing it here on the other side. They have some really cute fall decor items this year even though my Dollar Tree by my house still doesn't have theirs out. They have like a little bit of Halloween 
but all of it is still sitting in the boxes. I was about ready to pitch in and help them um, stock the shelves today just so I could see what they have. <laughs> But some of the stuff is really cute. Some of the stuff like this one, I kind of wanted to remake. So now this middle section, I do want to go ahead and fill it in just so I have a flat surface to work with when I do a, my middle oval. So I just kind of had to get creative, almost doing like triangle shapes here at the top and the bottom just to fill that all in. And then we can start with our third oval. I wanted this to be 3D and I want this to be kind of overlapping the two ovals on this side. So I just start with a long piece in the middle and then I'm starting from the inside outside on this one, hot gluing around until I go from the top to the bottom of the pumpkin. And you can already tell kind of how cool this looks. It is a little time consuming with um, the hot gluing, but really it's kind of a mindless crafting. You can get it done pretty easily. I think that looks pretty good. And then to finish it off, I thought we could use one of these like little leather tags. They did bring these back again this year for fall at Dollar Tree and I love them. I thought we could do like the little harvest tag here. It's like a brown leather. It has a little strap. So we can kind of take advantage of that by actually just using that strap and using that to tie that right around the pumpkin. I think it totally goes with that like sweater vibe that I was going for. I'm just going to tack mine down with a little hot glue just to make sure that it stays in place. And this DIY is complete. I originally was going to paint it that same like honey kind of color, but I loved it with just the my, white my, macrame cord. And so I think I'll leave it just like that. I think it looks really cozy for fall. You could also try this with, you know, some of their colored macrame cord they have now, but I really like like the wood stem, the brown leather combined with the white rope. It just really looks like a cozy little pumpkin. And I love the workmanship in it. Um, I love any kind of like rope, twine projects like that. I'm always a big fan of. Now check out this really long pumpkin sign I got at the Dollar Tree. Look how thick it is. No bowing. It's nice and thick. Really impressed with the quality of these long signs for fall. And I like it. It says happy fall, which is kind of perfect. I wanted to see if I could kind of make it into something useful for my home. And so I don't really want to destroy the image. I do want to pop off the leaf though with as minimal damage as I can. I will replace that leaf with something. I'm just going to go ahead and take the little raffia bow off as well. I want to leave it saying happy fall and I love the little pumpkins that are on there. I thought we could make ours into like a little, like almost like a flower box that I can display on the table next to my entryway for fall. So it's going to kind of work like a little bit of a shelf sitter, but it kind of stands up on its own um, for an entryway sign. Now, I don't really like the bright red color, so I'm just going to distress all of it with ivory paint and just kind of working in one direction. I want to make sure that you can still read it. You can kind of still see the pumpkins, but I did want it to look distressed. And so it is a paper. It's not going to distress great, but I was just kind of distressing, wiping off the excess um, until I got like kind of an even level of distress all over that I was happy with. And then we can keep working on this DIY. Now I want to attach like a planter box to the bottom and I picked up these little nested wood crates at the Target dollar spot. They're $5, but you get three of them. And these are the white ones. I think they're going to be perfect. White is exactly what I wanted for this. And the middle, the middle or the medium size crate is the perfect size for this Dollar Tree sign. Now, I do want you to be able to read fall still. So I am going to kind of have to make a stand to attach it. Um, to make it a little bit sturdier. But I thought while we're at it, we should go ahead and paint the little box. And they have these little self-adhesive stencils this year with the fall. And so I thought we would try one. It's just the right size for that little box. And I'm going to do the one that says, welcome to our patch. That's going to kind of go with the pumpkin theme on that. 
and you can just tear out the individual stencil and I haven't used these before but they're actually just stickers so I'm gonna peel and stick now I'll kind of show you what happened with mine it wasn't super easy to lay down because it got all tangled so I'm trying to like smooth out the parts that I can first but it was those two little lines but be above two hour and like below um, two hour that kind of didn't want to lay flat, but you know what? We made it work. I just kept kind of, you can peel it off and rearrange it. And it's kind of cool because it sticks down all by itself. So it's going to make the stencil work a little bit better, but it was a little challenging to get on there. I'm going to use that same golden sunset color, um, the honey theme. It's going to match with some of the colors in that fall sign, but be a little bit more of a contrasting sign. And I'm just painting that with a Dollar Tree like makeup sponge, just lightly pouncing over like two coats maybe. And you might want to use some painter's tape. Um, so if you have trouble staying on it like I do. <laughs> and we're just going to go ahead and peel the little stencil off. And success, I think it worked really cool. It's a little rustic, but that's always what I'm going for. And I'm actually gonna make it even look more rustic by kind of distressing the front of it with a little ivory paint. Just to kind of make it look a little bit aged. And I'm glad I decided to add to that because I think that's a really fun little touch on there. Now to attach it, I thought one of these little wood, craft wood squares from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. Um, I can attach that to the back of the sign and then um, also attach that inside the box. Now I don't want you to be able to see it though. So I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the top and the bottom of this just white. So we'll kind of blend in with the box that we're gonna use. I don't normally pick this size up of the craft wood because I think $1.25 for this size of wood is not that inexpensive, but for little projects like this, it is nice because you don't have to do any cutting. So I can just fit it right in there, but the first step is to attach it to our Happy Fall pumpkin. The other long sign that I got from the fall section at Dollar Tree this year is like a really long cutting board. And I think that is really cool as well. I was really impressed with the quality of this. And I just glue that on the back of my sign like that. And then I can glue that little wood panel inside my base. But remember, we did tear that leaf off before, so we do need to kind of cover that up with something. I thought one of these little faux leather leaves from the Dollar Tree would be perfect. It's kind of like a really warm um, brown color. So I just pop off the stem on that, and we're just going to attach that to the top of that with hot glue to kind of make, I think that I like that look better than just the paper leaf that was on there before. And I just attach it with some hot glue to the top. And now we can add this little fall pumpkin inside that box. Um, basically, I'm going to glue it from the back now, right inside the wood crate. You can put it in there as low as you want. I do still want to be able to read the fall sign once I have some stuff put in the little planter box. So this is a great way to take one of those long signs from the Dollar Tree and make it freestanding. Now to fill it up, I'm gonna use two of the little hay bales from Dollar Tree and some Dollar Tree pumpkins. I got those Dollar Tree pumpkins a couple of years ago at Dollar Tree and they were like a darker orange. I painted them that pumpkin color cause I like that a little bit better. So I'm just gonna reuse these. And two of those fill up that bin perfectly, the little hay bales. And then we're just going to hot glue the little pumpkins kind of all over the hay bales. And it'll go with our little pumpkin patch theme. It's going to provide another little fall color here. And this was such an easy DIY to make for my front door. I'm hoping since the sign is nice and thick, it will hold up to a little bit of weather outside. But we will see. <laughs> I have a little bit of protection on my front porch from weather, but not much. But this is how it turned out, our little happy fall pumpkin. I'm glad that I distressed it because that red was just a little bit too much for me. But if you like it, you could totally just leave that part alone. And here is 
is our little crate full of pumpkins. Pretty cute, huh? Okay, nothing says fall like a cozy candle. So we're going to make a really easy fall candle using a Dollar Tree candle and candle holder. Um, I thought we could use some of the faux leather from the Dollar Tree. I thought that would give us a fun um, kind of like neutral color scheme for this. But we can make it look really fun. Now, the candle that I got is vanilla scented. So a scented candle for fall is perfect. I do need to figure out how big of a strap I need just to make a little sleeve for our candle holder. So I'm actually just going to use my candle holder itself to kind of figure that out. And then um, I'll just need a straight edge here. I can kind of draw on the back of this faux leather. And I don't craft with this stuff from the Dollar Tree very much, but I've been crafting with it more lately. I really love how easy it is to cut and it has a great texture on it. So I probably should use it more often. It comes in lots of different colors too. I think I have navy, brown, black, and this like ivory color. Now I thought this would be the perfect application for one of these little leather tags to decorate the candle. This one says harvest um, and I can attach that to the front of that. So just making sure that is going to be long enough, the little strap to go across and I'm just going to hot glue this down. Now the leather to the leather was a little hard with hot glue. I don't know, maybe I should have used a different kind of glue because I did have to glue that down several times. I also didn't really like the fact that the pumpkin stem had a hole in it from the little tag part. So um, I didn't glue that part down so I can kind of just snip that off. I kind of like it without one um, rather than to have a hole in it. And as you can see, it's staying down, but like the edges kind of kept wanting to lift up and I did have to glue them down a couple times, but in the end, I did get it to stay. And it kind of makes it worse that I'm kind of sloping it around that round surface, but it did work in the end. So I'm just gluing my ends down one more time, trying to make sure that they go all the way to the edges. And then we can just put this like little um, wrap around the candle holder. What an easy way to decorate a Dollar Tree candle. So I just put some hot glue down and hot glue the vinyl down, wrap it around. I think that those little tags are just the perfect size for a candle this size. I'm going to trim that down and hot glue that to itself right there on the back. Now, as you can see, it did the edges lifted up again. That's what I was talking about. I don't know if I should have used a different kind of glue. But in the end, I used hot glue again. This time I held it down um, while it was bent and um, until it dried. And in the end, it did stay down, but it was challenging. It was fighting me there for a little bit. But I love the colors of that. I think that's going to look perfect with a little ivory colored candle right inside. And I don't think it needs anything else. I was just making sure that my pumpkin was not going to pop off again. And, um, you know, this should be fine to burn. Really nothing I think is going to be flammable. And so this is going to be a fun little candle for fall. So easy to put together and just pop the candle right inside. And there it is, our little harvest pumpkin candle for fall. Super cozy. And I love the colors together. This is how it looks. I haven't lit it yet because it is so hot outside. It was 110 degrees in my car today. Oh my goodness. Fall sounds heavenly, doesn't it? And this is how it looks from a distance. I think it's really sweet. What do you think? Okay, next DIY. I wanna DIY one of these vases from the Dollar Tree. One of my favorite things to, to DIY. And then I have some pampas grass from the Dollar Tree and some fall pampas grass. It's a little bit shorter, but it's got that beautiful like honey color. Now I thought we could use one of these little sun hats from the Dollar Tree to kind of make like a seagrass, like a braided seagrass look on that Dollar Tree vase. Let me show you how easy this is to do. Now, I've always cut this stuff in the past, but I found that if you just get it started with the thread, it just peels right off. 
It's like a plastic thread that they use to keep this together. Look at this. You just pull and it comes apart. Now it's not super clean. Some of the plastic thread does like to stick out, but I think that's pretty cool. I used pretty much just the brim of the hat. I think that's gonna be enough to color cover the Dollar Tree vase. And it's a great way to take a cheap $1.25 vase like this and make it look really high end. So to attach it, I'm just using hot glue um, right there to get me started. And I'll use some hot glue along the bottom just to make sure that I keep like this bottom row exactly where it should be. And I go all the way around. Now I don't wanna cut and start again. I do wanna just keep wrapping it. So then I just slightly go up and I'm just overlapping uh, like the seagrass, like right below it slightly. And I'm just kind of wrapping with pressure, but then just hot gluing every, he you know, here and there, um, just to make sure it's gonna stay tight and not come unwound. But I couldn't believe how easy it was to take this stuff apart. I'm going to have to remember that. I use the purses a lot to decorate with because it gives you a cheap like Dollar Tree version. But you get kind of like that seagrass look. With this pattern, it's like really looks woven. It looks really cool. So I go all the way to the top, just hot gluing it to itself. And we have a new vase. I think that color is gonna go perfect with a fall theme. But like I said before, you can kind of see there, there's little plastic threads kind of sticking out all over from that. And so I don't know the best way to remove them. I did try giving it a quick trim with some scissors. I did even try a lighter, but it didn't really work too well. Um, I did notice if you grab them though, the ones that were kind of like really obvious, and kind of tug on them, you could kind of pull them out. And so that's what I kind of did. But in the end, um, they don't stick out very much. So I don't think it's going to be super obvious. But that might be the only downside of the way that I took it apart. But I think that looks pretty good. So let's fill this up with some Dollar Tree flowers. I wanted to combine this Pampas with the regular Pampas, both from the Dollar Tree. Um, I do kind of like the fact that they're different lengths, but I do like the other one a little bit better just because it seems like um, the Pampas looks a little bit better than these fall color ones. They also had these in orange today at my Dollar Tree that I also picked up for Halloween. So I'm just going to go ahead and take all the tags off of these. Then we can arrange them in the vase. I thought like one of this color, which is the only one I have left. I've already DIY'd with this before. I made a Pampas wreath in a previous video. And then two of like that honey color, kind of like on each side of the vase for a fun little floral arrangement. Now I got it all on there and I decided I needed to add some sand to my vase to make it easier to stand these up. And so I'm gonna go ahead and put them back in there. That way I can arrange them a little bit. I just put some a little bit of Dollar Tree sand in there and I thought it still needed something. I love the colors, but I thought it needed something more that just kind of like screamed fall. And I remembered I had some Dollar Tree leaves, like a pick of leaves with very similar colors. And so I'm gonna see how that looks adding it. I think maybe I've used a few leaves off this before. So I'm just kind of removing any empty stems that I can find just to clean that up. But I think there's still enough leaves left on here. And I'm so glad I added the leaves to the pampas grass because the combination of the two of them is absolutely beautiful. They just really work well together. Let me try to kind of show you can't really lean it too much so let me show you how this looks um in my home it's so pretty i love those colors that honey color is really growing on me and this is how it looks all together i kind of did the pampas graphs off to one side the fall leaves on the other side and how cool does that vase look who knew that that would be like from a dollar tree sun hat and this is how it looks from a distance. So beautiful for fall. 
Okay, the next DIY, I thought we could try to DIY one of these little chair covers. Um, these are new this year, I think. I've never seen them before, but they're like giant scarecrow heads. I thought, I don't really have a chair this size, and they're really large. Like, I don't know who would have a chair this big, but I thought we could DIY this and make this into a fall pillow. How whimsical and fun would that be? This one has, like, the brown hat, but when I flipped it over, I was, um... Surprised to see it didn't have a back. I kind of thought it had a front and a back and you could just slide it over your chair. But you know what? It only had like a little, like a little bit of fabric just to hold it on the top. So if I'm going to make it into a pillow, I'm going to have to add material to the back, which is no big deal. I'll just see what I have from the Dollar Tree. And I found I had some tan fabric that was going to be the perfect size. So it doesn't really matter what you put back here. You're just going to have to have something large enough. Because as you can see, I can barely get this whole thing in my camera shot because it's so big. I'm just going to, I'm not going to iron this or anything. It's just going to be the back of my pillow. I was kind of afraid to iron the felt on the Dollar Tree scarecrow pillow cover front there because sometimes Dollar Tree stuff melts. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start here where that fabric ends and I'm just going to put hot glue down the side of the scarecrow overlapping the edges of mine. Now this is just regular fabric so it will fray a little bit so I want to try to mitigate that. So um, I'm just going to do one section at a time. Basically I'm going to hot glue that with a like overlap so that I can trim that down even with the felt on the front of the scarecrow all the way up until I reach the brown fabric again and then we can start stuffing our pillow. Now once I get it all glued down it's just a matter of cutting the fabric and what I do is I cut it as close as I can get to the felt and I'm hoping that the hot glue um, will keep it from fraying. And so far, so good. It looks pretty good. And again, that's just the back of the pillow. So it doesn't have to be super pretty. I did find that if you cut from the front, it was a little bit easier to see what you're doing here. And included in the giveaway today is another one of these little scarecrow um, chair covers so that you can try to DIY this for yourself. Later on the video, I'm giving away 20 Dollar Tree items, a lot of items that are kind of hard to find, and things that I think that um, viewers of my channel will enjoy. So stick around for that giveaway, it's so exciting. Now, I always have old pillows, I always save them because I don't like to spend money on like polyfill fluff when you can just use them from old pillows. This was a really large pillow, and it basically took all the stuffing that I had to fill it up. And so I'm just kind of breaking the stuffing up into pieces. That way um, there's no areas that are gonna be super bulky. But I thought this would be really cute like on the bench in my entryway for fall. And it's a, really a nice size for a bench because it's so wide. So I have it stuffed. Now I thought it would be a cleaner seam if I just used that existing seam on the brown felt and glued it with hot glue right on top of the fabric sealing that all in. And even though I used um, just regular fabric on the back, I really didn't have any fraying that's visible. Now the tricky part is um, doing this without burning yourself. I just put one of those Dollar Tree hot glue protectors on my finger. I'm putting my finger inside the pillow to push up against the felt so it can kind of come into contact because it has all that fluff on the inside. So it was kind of hard to get it on there and glue down enough to dry. Now when I get this far, I just put hot glue on the felt, kind of sitting it down on there and kind of pinching it to make sure that it's attached. And that's all there is to it. We have a giant scarecrow pillow. I think it's so fun. I tried to scare my son with this and he was like, uh, that's cute, it's not scary. <laughs> I noticed that the little felt hair kind of wants to stick together. So I'm kind of just kind of sorting that out a little bit. But otherwise, I think he's adorable. And um, just a fun use for the little Dollar Tree chair covers they have for fall this year. Really impressed with the size of these. 
This and like the Dollar Tree wood signs for Halloween are huge compared to what they usually are. So I guess that extra 25 cents is allowing us to get some bigger items. But this is how it turned out. Our little scarecrow head pillow. I think he's so adorable. If you don't like like the buffalo check for the strap, you could totally change that out for something else. But its face is so cute. It's already got all the hair and everything. So just a really easy, fun DIY that I think everyone would enjoy. And you can see it takes up like almost my whole bench. It's so large. Now they have some really cute metal buckets for fall this year. This one's really traditional. It says, hello fall. And I thought that'd make the perfect planter for a little floral arrangement. And I'm really loving some of their fall florals at the Dollar Tree. Now this little green foam piece fits perfectly in their little metal buckets. So I always like to use this to fill it, no cutting involved. It does fit flat flush with the top though. So I don't want that to be visible. So I'm just going to hot glue some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree all over that to kind of disguise that. And, you know, that brown um, Spanish moss color is going to kind of go with my fall decor. Now I'm only going to use like three picks with this one. I picked up a couple of cattails in kind of that honey color and then some really high end looking a pumpkin pick there. Um, really, they're stepping up their game with some of their pumpkins this year. Once I get it all glued on there, the Spanish moss, I'm just going to give it a quick trim just to kind of clean it up a little bit. And now it is ready for a flowers. You can always fill this up with a bucket of pumpkins too, but I thought if we added some florals to this, we can make it look even better. Now these florals, they kind of have tabs where you can kind of shorten them. Makes it kind of easy to cut the plastic part. And then if you just bend back and forth, the metal breaks pretty easily. I'm going to do the pumpkin one right in front. I think it's so pretty. I kind of want that to be the star of the show. Just pushing that into the foam. And then I got two foxtails the same color there today. They do have the fall florals out at my Dollar Tree, this local, even if they don't have anything else out. They're killing me. And this is the other two. Um, none of my Dollar Tree, I've been to two today, neither one of their air conditionings are working properly. I felt so sorry for the employees in there because I was sweating. They have to really be sweating. It's too hot for that. I don't know if the buildings just can't keep up or what's going on, but it was even hot in Target today as well. So I did have to shorten the cattails as well. And I'm going to do one on each side of the little pumpkin pick. And I think the colors work really well together. The greenery on that really matches the greenery on the pumpkin pick. And we're just going to kind of slide that in there. Not much arranging needed. Just kind of um, trying to make it look even and full. And this DIY was so easy. Just to add a little bit of fall decor wherever you want to add it. Such an easy DIY. And look at those beautiful colors. I think they did a great job on those pumpkins. The way they're distressed look really nice. And I'm loving the greens and the browns there. And the little metal bucket, so cute for fall. You don't even have to DIY those anymore because they're so cute already. And this is how it kind of looks like from a distance. Now the next DIY is super easy. I'm going to use one of those rub on transfer stickers from the Dollar Tree. And I found this little glass frame there today. They had these like in this like brass or gold. They also had it in silver. I thought gold would be great for fall. And so it's got two little pieces of glass in there. Really, I only need one piece, but we're going to make it work. Um, I just went ahead and peeled off the paper. For some reason, it's like the stickiest piece of tape ever on there, but we're going to use some Goo Gone and try to scrape that off. Now, I thought at first that this was like a glass sticker. It says pumpkin spice and everything nice, but it's actually a rub on. But when I read the directions on the back, it said that you can use this on glass. So we're going to find out. So I finally got my glass cleaned off 
and this is the one that we're going to use and I'm really glad that it was kind of a rub on instead of a decal because you don't really get any background. So just peel the back off and stick it on like a sticker. Just kind of lining that up on our glass frame. And actually, I probably could have just done this on the glass that was still in the frame um, instead of having to fight that sticker. But I just used a popsicle stick to make sure it's down. And just like any of the rub-ons, just kind of test it. If it's not down all the way, put it right back down and scrape some more. And you'll never know that there was any damage to it at all. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way up. And I'm so excited about pumpkin spice season. That's probably my favorite. I think that looks really good. Now, now's the time to get rid of fingerprints. It was really hard not to get fingerprints on this because there's really nowhere to hold it where you're not going to get fingerprints on it. But I'm going to do my best to clean it up before I put it back in that frame. And then it would drive me crazy, right? So I left the existing glass in there and I'm going to put the back glass back in. It has these little um, like staples you can push down to hold it flat. And then it has a little built in stand. Isn't that cute and easy? Now, one thing I did notice is when I tried to stand it up, it wanted to like kick back a little bit too far. It didn't want to stand up great for me. So I took it, tested it and then decided I needed to maybe bend the tab on it a little bit to make it stand up a little bit better. So this is a tab I'm talking about. I just bit mine with a pair of pliers, kind of more towards the glass until I got it to stand up exactly where I wanted because it really was kind of laid back. That's how I want it. And that is how it turned out. Super sweet and easy. And anytime I can find a glass frame like that from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to pick it up because there's so many decals and different things you can put on that to make a really fun little sign. This would be cute anywhere because it's nice and small, like tear trays, office spaces, kitchens. Isn't it cute? Hey guys, I wanted to let you guys know again that I've introduced memberships here on my channel. For $4.99 a month, you're going to get early ad-free access to my video. And I want to give a big member shout out to the following Crafty Beach Bums. And thank you for supporting my channel. So thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R, Tracy Knight, Verna Noctigal, Julie Miller, Nancy Wunner, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, and Janae Farrington. Thank you so much for supporting me here at Crafty Beach. It really helps. And now it's time for the final reveal. Be sure to like this video. It really helps the algorithm. Share it if you think you know anybody that might like this video. And comment your favorite fall DIY below or just come, come say hello in the comments. I really appreciate it. And if you haven't subscribed, I would really appreciate it. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers. Open up the window I'm breathing in the last of September I can feel the wind blow And the late summer sky is like a dying ember
Open up the window. I'm breathing in the last of September. I can feel the wind blow, and the late summer sky is like a dying ember. Thank you so much for watching today's video. If you'd like to watch more Crafty Beach, YouTube thinks you might enjoy this video right here. Thanks for making it all the way to the end.